the producer's gonna get fired. Oh. She's gonna get fired, everybody. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Infantry Outdoors live on YouTube. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I'm your host, DJ Infantry, the blind sniper, as I've been called. Hope everybody's having an awesome day. I hope that wherever you are around the world, it is an amazing day for you. Hope everybody's having a good one. Thank you, everybody, for waiting. Hey, there it goes. I don't know why I can't come in early like you guys to my live streams, but uh, everybody's having a good one. Oh, better turn it down, infantry. Hey, there it goes. I don't know why I can't come in early like you guys. Uh, uh, mute. There we go. Mute. You're a mute infantry. You're just not only blind, you're mute today. So, guys, how you doing? I hope you're having an awesome day. I hope everything is great on your side. Thank you so much for waiting. As I said, the producer was running late tonight. Um, let's see if I make this big. Can I make it big? Can my All right. I can make a whole time. screen. Oh, the comments pop up over there. And now when we put up the thing, hey, we're learning, guys. I was on the phone with Shiner Guy today for probably about half an hour doing some homework on this stuff. So, Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Friday. It's Friday, and we made it to the live stream. Yeah. Hey, I'm not the only one that's been excited. Welcome to the program. Tonight, we are going to talk on the topic of first aid. Um, basic first aid, first aid for beginners, first aid for people that don't know no better. Um, I've pulled out some first aid kits tonight. I've got two awesome special guests lined up for you, two amazing creators We've got Big Boone's YouTube channel coming back with us tonight. He was an awesome guest last week. If you guys missed last week's live stream, yo, you missed out on a lot. I'm telling you, we went a record-breaking four-hour live broadcast, and it didn't even feel like that. So we got Big Boone's back with us tonight, and I'm going to be joined by my brother, Coyote. Arr, the howling man. Coyote from Wright's Trapping is going to be with us tonight, and we're going to be talking all about first aid. So I know the chat's been blowing up. I appreciate you guys staying in the queue, waiting for, for the broadcast to begin. Uh, the producer was running a little bit late. So again, infantry was back and forth, back and forth, making, setting up, getting things ready, um, putting the kids to bed. You guys know I've got two youngsters myself and we, uh, we actually do this broadcast Fridays at 10 because it's the only night we can get them into bed and be able to do this with you guys. So that's why Friday nights is so special and so good for me and the producer because, well, we're kid free. So let's start off the program as we always do. Before I bring on my two guests, I do want to acknowledge some folks in the chat. So let me crack this over so I can hear the producer and let's start naming names because I'm not going to take a single drink for everybody, but we're going to take one drink. Start it off because I know there's quite a few people in there. I know Wright's Trapping is here. Right. I know Big Boons is here. Who else do we got? All right. C.P. Grand. C.P. Grand. The first one in tonight. Yeah, he was the first. I saw that when we were in queue. C.P. Grand, bro. Hey, you know what? For Just for you. For you being the first one, I'm going to do a solo down the hatch for you, bro. Happy Friday. God bless you, bro. Thank you for your support. I hope that you're in a wonderful place. And, you know, we really, really appreciate you, bro. Cheers. Happy Friday to you, my friend. Tiger Muskin. Tiger Muskin. Yep. Tactical Technician. Tactical technician. I called him earlier. He didn't answer. He's here now. He's, He's here, here now. I got him. <laughs> Who else have we got? Is that it? Rob's here. Oh, Shiner Guy Raid. Fish and Trucker. Can't forget Fish and trucker. Hung, hung. Box My brother. Boxy. They're all coming in from Rob. So, Shiner Guy Raid for sure. All right, guys. Here we go. Oh, quick, quick, quick. Devlin Neighbor, Swamp Stalker. Um, hold on. There's more. There's more. Boxy Outdoors. <laughs> See what happens, producer, when you run late? Yeah. It, it goes on me. Yeah. So, all right, we got everybody. Happy Friday, family. Thank you, as always, for coming in. Thank you for supporting not only me, but everybody else in the chat. Check out the moderators. They are family for real, guys. So happy Friday to each and every one of you. May God richly bless you and your families. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Thank you for coming in every Friday. Cheers, everybody. Drinks up. Now, I do want to clarify, as I do every broadcast, you do not have to drink an alcoholic beverage to participate. When we do a cheers, you can have coffee, you can have milk and cookies, you can have a Coke and a smile. The end of the day, folks, I on Friday nights, this is what I'm doing for you. I am saluting, I'm cheersing to you. I don't know, I guess there's that new word, I'm cheersing you. So cheers to you guys, because without you, I would not be sitting in this chair doing this, honest to God. So thank you again very much. 
And that's why I do what I do. So as long as you guys follow along, that's awesome. So I'm not going to kill the producer too bad here tonight. I'm going to start with we're going to add one guest <laughs> and see if she can do that. So let's go ahead and start and bring. I got it with two. You got, well, let's bring one on at a time. Let's see if yeah. you can do that. Because we do want to, I do want to bring on Big Boons first. Okay. He was last week's guest, so I do want to bring him up and chat with my brother here for a moment because we had a record-breaking week, and he ha he is a big part of that. So go ahead and bring Boons on, and we'll get linked with him. Just sent a message. It says, uh, "Hello, sorry, I haven't been on much, guys. I seriously messed up." Scarecrow, brother. Okay, well I'm gonna give you a cheers either way because you're here. You know how that goes. We love you, brother. You know that. My friend, if you need something, you know you can reach out. Either in the, the chat, in the stream, in my email. I give you my phone number. You need something, brother? I got you. If y'all can help Scarecrow out. Major back trouble. I can help you out with that. I worked for two of the world's greatest chiropractors for 17 years. I got you, but hit me, do me a favor, drop me a phone number. I'll call you and I'll give you some pointers and I'll at least get you through the night and tomorrow. All right. Do that for me. But let me get my guest Boons on. We got Scarecrow guys. We're going to take care of him. Make sure you pray for his back because that crap hurts. Scar uh, Big Boons. Where's Big Boons at? I know my tablet's going to be behind, so I'm just waiting for audio. What's going on, bro? There he is. How are you, my brother? I'm good. I want to start by thanking you for an amazing broadcast last week. Uh, no issues. No issues. There was, we had, I don't know if it, we would have kept going had somebody not stopped us. <laughs> but, you know, that's what two guys that are passionate about what they do end up talking. And, and everybody that's passionate in the chat ends up participating. And tonight's going to be an amazing night as well. So thank you, bro. I really appreciate it. You're an amazing guest. No issues there. How Thank are things with you again? Of course, anytime. You family, brother. You're welcome anytime. How's things where you are today or this week? They're uh, they're not they're not bad. I can't complain too much. Good. That's good to hear. Any videos this week? Um, I think I put out one or two. Okay. Well, do me a favor, mod. Somebody post the links for those two new videos. We want to get the brother. Uh, you know, let you guys check him out. And uh, to, you know, tonight we're talking about first aid. I hope yeah, you did your I, homework. You did your homework on this one? A little bit. A little bit? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. No, no. Next, it, our it's like a, every... If you're a hunter, you go through the hunter safety training book, which is pretty much a binder, you know what I mean? Or yeah. yep. a textbook. So in, in that section, there's a big uh, big section of it, on it about uh, you know what to do in an emergency. How to get people out of the bush, you know, the splints, the the cradles, uh, all this and that. So Awesome. So, yeah, you did your homework. Okay, now our next guest, you know, uh, if you guys don't know him, you need to check his channel out. This man is an amazing guy. Great channel. He's been working really hard to improve his channel. Um, he calls me whenever he needs help. I help as much as I can, as much as everybody else does. So uh he has actually been so excited boons that he he texted me today he's, i'm so excited for tonight I, I i've been practicing you know getting ready all week so this is going to be an amazing amazing broadcast because we have three passionate people uh let's bring on coyote rights trapping if you guys don't know this channel let's see how the producer does on this one brother right you got us i'm here there, oh, all I'm over here on the east coast or west all coast right. i'm saying Hot dog. I can see three people. Holy crap. This thing is cool. <laughs> it really is amazing. Coyote, how are you? It's getting better. It is amazing, bro, that we're able to do this. It really is. Um, how are you doing tonight, my friend? I'm still alive. We're still moving. Um, I've been excited about this all week. Uh, been nervous <laughs> about it. I just... That 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 goes away after a few. The butterflies go away. About the start... sixth time I've been on a panel, so I'm. Well, hey, look, when you work with your brother, it's just like like Boone's last week. We just flowed, and it look how look how much we covered. So, uh, I got to turn this fan on. Every week, this fan freezes me out, guys. Hold on. 
after a while, it's like uh, meeting a couple of colleagues at the water cooler. You know what I mean? Uh, get to chat about their videos and exactly, exactly. Yeah. And the and thing like, that I like, like is the like picking infantry the said, we all have the passion for the outdoors. You know, so and that's what's important. That that makes everything. When you find people that have passion for what they do and passion about what they want to show people, there's it's amazing what you can accomplish. Now. I, uh, let's just say for an example, well, because I'm dis disabled related, um, I have a disability. Well, that doesn't enable me to do certain things that Boons might be able to help me out with. Coyote might be able to help me out with. Swamp Stalker Outdoors has helped me out with and took me on my very first hunt. Um, it, it, it's really amazing that how well we, we grow in YouTube because of the passion. Oh, yeah. You guys are Yeah. It's like a, a second family. It really is. Where did Boons go? You got him? Did you do that, producer? No. Did you did you boot my buddy Boons? <laughs> my fat thumbs, bro. Yeah. No, it was you. I'm yelling uh, at the producer. Okay. Every time I go to bring up the chat, it's second time in a row I've done it. Oh yeah, yeah, because on you're on a mobile device, so the yeah. chat works away. I'm gonna, oh, that, I can get a mouse for it. I should do that eventually so I don't have to fiddle right. around. It really does. Even like the comments, like I have this blown up full screen on the, on the tablet. Now I'm behind a little bit, probably about six seconds behind in the, in the video delay. Um, but the wife has figured out from watching Shiner Guy how to put comments she wants me to see bigger on the screen by showing them. And I, now I, like I them, have yeah. full screen on, on, a, on a 12 inch tablet. So. We might be good people. I don't know. This is like the home studio grows every week. I tell you, it's like I get off of here and I do homework for next week. <laughs> I need to be a producer to go live. Yeah, it, it make it does make the world a difference, at least for us folks that can't read the comments. Now, again, like I've stressed to many of you that if I wanted to read the comments, I could, but you'd watch a video of my forehead. And, I, and that gets boring after a while. It's a big forehead, but, you know. <laughs> All right, so fellas, first aid. Let's talk a little bit about first aid. Now, we, we've we all had situations in our lives where we got ouchie boo-boos somewhere, sometime, or a fish hook in the hand, or I've slipped out of the tent and busted my tailbone, and now I can't walk. What do I do? Fall Tonight, down a hundred-foot ravine. <laughs> or yeah, well, we're gonna get into the stories now. Coyote, I know, has got some stories. Boons, I'm sure, has some stories. And come on, I'm blind. I just busted my head in the countertop. I don't know if you could see it. I cracked my head in the corner of the damn counter, and it hurts. <laughs> but no, not even the cat. Yeah, the top cabinet. So I'm blind. It happens a lot. <laughs> so guys, I think we should start off with. Um, the basics now we're going to keep this basic and you guys feel free like oh and and both of y'all if you see a comment and you want to say it say it don't wait for me again i'm going on a three minute delay <laughs> over here on the tablet so yeah if you guys want to chime in chime in i think the first thing that we, everybody thinks of when we <laughs> say, put your hand up <laughs> my hand out well if we're always especially after you get one or two more people you can't the, see our hands waved we could be over talking oh, yeah, each other. You know? watch. watch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, eight, eight, eight second delay. So again, if you see a comment, please say it, read it, stop me, you know, because I'm look tonight. I'm gonna try to look at the camera, not so much you guys, because I shouldn't have did that last week. <laughs> I want to boy outdoors says, How's it going, bro? Oh, Jersey Boys Outdoors, we are doing good. And we are talking about first aid. And the first thing that pops in my head when I hear first aid, right, is I did some homework, guys. I don't know how far behind you guys are, but first aid. Okay. Or we have first aid, right? That's what I think of when I hear first aid. Everybody's got something like this. This is what I keep in my bag. This is what I keep in my truck. This is what I keep in my house. But there's a difference between that green one and that white. It, right. And there are differences between these, and we can go through them later. But, again, this is when I sit here, first aid, I think first aid kit. 
So for the general audience, do you it's, guys see the same it thing? It has its own it's purpose. Right, like right. Y like y'all were saying, each your one small kit's for the vehicle. The other green kit is for your outdoors. Uh, when you're at home, you have certain supplies, so you don't need all, all of this stuff. You only need this particular stuff. When Correct. you're out in the woods, you don't have anything but what you brought and what nature provides for you. Exactly. And, and again, when we say first aid, we're not just talking about the kit. We're actually going to talk about how to implicate the kit. What does the kit mean? Well, it popped off again. I'm eight seconds. You got to leave it there. Okay. It's going to be a minute. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's got to be Shannon. Yeah, like Swamp Stalker said, it yeah. could be it could be duct tape that yeah. that might save your life. No, hey, and it saved his oh, butt. If you seen the video, <laughs> if you ain't seen the video, go back and watch me hunting with Swamp Stalker. Duct tape and some paracord out of my bag made it through the hunt. The other half of the day, it made it through the hunt. Um, duct tape's an amazing thing. I mean, I have a slice. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I have a slice in this finger, and I put it back together with duct tape and a pencil when I was a kid that's uh, what that's what i had to do <laughs> so um for again first aid we're not just talking about first aid kits we're talking about you know what do you do when there ain't no first aid kit we're going to talk about what to do with the stuff that comes in these first aid kits you know because kits get they 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 get very extensive you, you also can have, have to have the knowledge to correct kit before you go out or even think about opening up the kit for the situation that mm -hmm. you bought it for, open it up at home and go through everything and make sure you know how to use know it. everything. Yeah. Because if you have something that you don't know how to use, you could actually potentially hurt yourself worse trying to use it. Very true. Than not using it. Very true. That's very true. But and you don't take it out of the kit because you don't know because you might have somebody show up that knows how to use it yep. and was like, well, where's your such and such? Right. Right. Yep. And that's what I was going to say about the kits. Now, these kits that you can buy, they're all come differently. There's different stuff in them. They have if you jump on Amazon and put in first aid kit, you can get some stuff that that comes in a kit that EMTs know how to use. Like seriously, paramedics and things like that. Like I don't even know how to use them. Um, I'm not really supposed to know how to use them. I should learn, but that's in case God willing, the person that finds me is a paramedic and oh, he's got everything he needs to do his job right there because it's in the little kit. But it, like Coyote said, you need to know what's in your kit. You need to understand why is there this in there? Why is there that in there? Um, why isn't there a roll of duct tape in there? I, I don't know. They should include that in every kit, but you know, <laughs> usually have some kind of hospital tape. Yeah. Hospital tape. But you know, when you're, we, you guys look guys, we, we hunt hospital tape. Don't hold for, for crap. When you're out there in the elements, yeah. you're going to get it wet. You're going to move it. You have to or, have, you're going to move. It's just inevitable. So, you know, Duct tape does it. <laughs> Duct tape does it. And, and I'm not knocking medical tape, but again, tonight we're talking about. No, for ser severe cuts, I'd rather use uh, crazy glue or gorilla glue. We, we were yeah. talking about that earlier. Yep, Coyote and I were talking about that earlier today because, yeah, believe it or not, folks, if you get a wound and you have no bandage, but you have a tube of, of uh, super glue, you just, pff, believe it or not, you just pff, right on the cut and it will heal your cut. That, not heal it, but close it and stop it from bleeding that fast. As fast as the glue can dry, that's how fast you get a layer of protection. There, there's a medical grade uh, glue. Yeah, they call it liquid band aid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's Here in the state, liquid, liquid band aid. Band -Aid. Um, and, and you can like, use that because it has the medical stuff in it, then biotics and all that. But the super glue, uh, in the military, we've used super glue. Uh, I've had my hand cut open and dropped some super glue in there until I could get the stitches in. That's what so my face, my face well, shot. Right glue was more readily hospital glue. I, I think that's a good point too. Is that super glue is more readily available worldwide 
than paper band-aid or liquid bandage or you know things like that so to keep that in mind wherever you live in your country if you can't get liquid band-aid honestly guys throw a tube of 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 super glue in your kit you never know if don't not you can start fire with it to the wound. <laughs> yeah I, just don't uh, glue, don't glue my yourself my daughter went to the er because she had a cut across her eye right here and i jokingly said to the nurse don't glue your finger to my daughter's eye and about <laughs> 10 seconds later she goes um can you call oh. one of the nurses for me <laughs> i'm like you glued your finger to my daughter's eye didn't you <laughs> no super glue man i'm telling you and they now they have super glue tape you could get that's that's yep. pretty off, off the hook so you know um Again, we haven't like really even gotten into where those topics fall, but we're going to play the program as it lies. <laughs> uh, super glue, put in your kit. Um, it's also, what else? Duct tape. Let's see what's in this one where we're chatting. Go ahead, guys. I think in like, because um, my, my grandfather gave me his old like medical book. Yeah, it's either that or the St. John's ambulance book that's up here in Canada that trains, you know what I mean? The paramedics and gives yep. you your first aid tr uh, training. Um, they say, depending on the situation, if you're in a group, depending on solo, there's different ways of going about situations. Yep. You know, like the first thing you should do is um, if you don't have the medical uh, expertise, look around for somebody that does. Yep, you know, Very, they, this is actually I'm and, impressed. And see, my problem is I'm always in the woods by myself. Uh, I, I'm always in inviting people, but I get them to go one time and I call a bear in <laughs> in the middle of the night and scare the yep. crap out of them and they won't go yep. again. Yeah, so I have yep. to learn how to take care of myself in my own situations, and that's and, that's that's a plus and a negative, though. Um, that's something that I, I, I don't preach solo stuff if you can help it um i mean we all have to do we have to do and kyle you know i know your situation dude so i know you gotta do what you gotta do but you know my wife and i have an agreement i don't go nowhere without someone i don't go on a boat i don't go on a kayak unless somebody's with me or watching um because you never know now i live in florida so when i say we go out on a kayak my kayak is probably smaller than the common alligator. And I have a 12 and a half foot kayak. You, you can kind of see where I'm going, right? I, I, I lived in Florida. I understand. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. When, when the creature is bigger than the boat that you're in, now mind you in a kayak, your, your butt is that far from the, like literally that far from the water. These things can jump out of the water three quarters, their body size. Um, yeah. You're gator bait. So you can kind of get why even bass fishing. If we go out on a bass boat, if God forbid something happens, um, again, we have alligators. So let's say you're Rob. Rob should know this. Okay. If you're ripping up on plane and alligator don't duck fast enough, they will rip your lower unit. They will take your transom off. And then what? <laughs> you're in gator, you see what I'm saying? Things can happen. Things can turn fast really quick. So, so I've learned I've, to always go with someone. Or if you do go, Coyote, I hope that you leave a a, uh, a day plan. A, a, a trip. I, uh, I have a uh, where I go hunting. Um, a couple years ago, I found this area and was hunting it. I fell down a ravine. Seven hours later, I got out. Somebody found me passed out in the middle of the road. Oh, wow. They went closest house down the road and mm. said, Hey, a disabled veteran down there that y'all need to go check on. Now they are some of my best friends and I call them a week before I head over there and say, Hey, I'm heading this way. And they'll go save my camp spot. And See? every day they, we, we check in with each other to, so they know I'm still alive and kicking. So, I mean, I, I have my check-ins and then we both, we all have a uh, Onyx map. And so they can locate where I'm at. <laughs> I have that too, Onyx Hunt. Is that what it is? Onyx Hunt app? If you're a disabled veteran or a veteran at all, Onyx map will give you 50% off. 
Yeah, I have the free version. <laughs> Actually, I learned about that from Swamp Stalker when we were out there. I believe he uses Onyx Hunt too. Um, well, my, if you're my veteran, get it half off and uh, only pay six bucks. Oh, that's great. Good to know, guys. Good to know for those that want to use Onyx Hunt to go out and hunt. But again, my, my point of I, I said something here, a trip plan, a as we call it in the boating world, a float plan, a when, if you're going to go by yourself, you need to leave something with someone, your, your wife, your kids, your next door neighbor. Hey, look, I'm going hunting. Here's a piece of paper that tells you where I'm going to start, where I'm going to finish and where I should be by this time. If I'm not here by this time, could you please start to worry about me? That's all a, a trip plan or float plan or pl if you're going to go solo. That's what you use as your first step of first aid, because that's your safety net. Somebody knows, OK, he's going here. Uh, he's going to Lake Okeechobee and he's going to launch at Roland Martin Marina. And his plan is to go up to the north side of the lake all the way up to the monkey box. And he's going to fish there and work his way back. That should all be in my float plan because that's what I'm going to do. If I divert from that float plan, how are you going to find me? God forbid. So I think Onex map is better than hunt wise. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Yeah, I mean, hey, uh, look, I, uh, I use Google Jersey Google, boy Google, outdoors. Google asked what's better on it or hunt wise. They, you know, I use Google maps and Google maps has an extension called GPS essentials. Up um, here in Canada, it's called uh, the back road map book that you want. to. We, get yeah, into. yeah. We don't have that here. We I've looked for that one. We don't have that here, yeah. but you know, basically, as long as you can drop a pin of your start point, you you should be able to get back there, provided your phone works. Now, if you're, you're in an you're, area, you're bringing where up some good points because a lot of people they go lost and maybe they could have been rescued within the first 24 hours instead of you know yep. spending a week out there. And most it, people are only lost by half a mile. You're not far off your target when you're lost. So. We're going to get into getting lost here in a minute because there, there's a very good point of it. Actually, I'll just drop it right now. If in the event you ever get lost, people, sit your butt down and stay put. Don't wander around. Don't try to figure out what you did because now you're going to go further off of where you are, and it's going to be harder for people to find you. Sit your butt down unless you know and make a signal fire. And find a way to signal people. Carrie, that's, we're going to get in. That's part of the first aid kit, mirrors and things like that. Um or you go to the woods in a new area, get you, go to Home Depot, and you know the marker flyer stuff that you can get? You can get a, like, it looks like tape a ribbon. rolled yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, ribbon. Ribbon. Marker. Yep. Every yep. 20 yards, tie it to tie a tree it. limb. Yep. And yep. by the way, I have to do that when I go up moose hunting up north oh, yeah. because the bush Especially is so thick. You move right. one tree out of the way. There's one uh, foot beside it, and you get turned around. Because you're rely really on your on your damn technology. I can tell you guys that right now. All right, I moved from the city to the country, and I'm lucky if I have to know where cell works and where cell don't work. Google and and all of these maps and all of this tech only works if it talks to the satellite. If you are a place where your have your towers battery. have no service or you have no towers, like my friend tactical tech and I have talked about, then you're really screwed because your tech don't work unless you can provide a relay off of a tower to you. Okay. Unfortunately, that's how it works. So these I are good have, points. I always have a compass when that's I go true. out. You always have a compass, right? The right. old fashioned compass will never nope. let you down as long never. as you look at it before you, north, you go for your north, walks. North is south. Unless you're yep. carrying too much metal on you. <laughs> it, what? <laughs> if you have uh, too much well, metal on you, you try to I mean, come on. You'll throw it off. <laughs> well, moss always grows on the north side of the tree. True. See, I it got quiet there for a minute. I taught somebody something there. I know I did. Oh, I got a comment coming in. Uh, tactical tech. Even if your phone has no signal or it has no service plan, you can still call 911 and they can bounce your signal off of a tower to get that your Out position. Okay, yes. and that is correct. I, that's I, how they try and get you. That is correct. That is I've correct. Had that you, you've had that happen? 
Here's an old school way to let, let me tell all y'all youngsters out there. There's this thing in your wall called a modular jack that the old people used to plug phones in that actually had cords attached to them. Um, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, all you youngsters that have no freaking clue what it was to go, hey, Booms, you, you going to be on the phone much longer? No, I think I'm talking to my girlfriend. I'm going to be here for a little while. Damn, I need to make a call. Bro. Yeah. Let's, yeah, you can even kick back to the <laughs> the old rotaries. <laughs> oh, crap. I missed the number. Hang up. Start again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you guys remember these things called payphones? Back in the day, way back when we were old and, and there was payphones, you had to put a quarter in the machine and type in the number. Yeah, you paid 25 cents for every time you use a payphone. Those What's are good gone. after five outdoors. He just joined After the stream. Five. Talk That's to him this week, my brother. Happy yeah. Friday to you. It was a pleasure talking with you, Cody. It, all this new technology is great until the battery dies. That That's another thing. That's another thing. But I'm out you know, there for a month and a half. I'm, I'm leaving October 5th, and I'll be in the woods until November 20th. And I'm going to uh, be out there by myself. Um, you have like a Jackery and some solar power or something like as a creator. I, um, I'm going deer and elk hunting and I've got a 16 foot Jayco camper and I've got a little bitty generator that. Oh, well then you're charges. good. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, you're you're not even roughing it at that point. Okay. There's you're also not. emergency flashlights that crank up and oh, I love charge, your, charge your phone at the same time. Really? Yeah. No, yeah. I've yeah. had old ones. From, I, well, okay, the old ones back in the day, you had an AM FM radio, you had a flashlight, and the cranker. And it's uh, like that now. Uh, almost the same thing, but they updated it so that you can plug in your phone. Wow. Well, you know, with lithium batteries nowadays, it, it's amazing. Now, it, it's amazing that we're walking around with grenades in our pockets and nobody's telling you people that that a lithium battery can explode and take parts of your body right off with no problem the little thin battery that you love so much and you can also start a fire with it too or like the so, one you're sucking on what is it or like the one you're sucking on like the one yeah no this is not a lithium this is a nicat oh. this this is oh. old school, bro i'm old school oh, on the okay. back. watch out <laughs> It's about this big, and it's like this big around. It's almost like a D cell battery inside of this giant thing. And, and something you brought up, Bones, uh, you said something a minute ago um, that you had your father's or grandfather's old uh, survival books and stuff. Infantry and I were talking about it just a minute ago on the phone. When I went through my training, my first time was back in high school in 88 or 87, 88, 89. I became an EMT. Um, I learned things this way. Then when I joined the military in 89 and became a first aid response team leader, I learned to do things this way. My daughter just came home the other day and said that she had to do first aid uh, classes, and they learn to do things a completely different way. So it's keep um, updated with what you learn. Don't yeah, don't yeah. always go on the old. I mean, the old school is old school, and it's great. But always, well, we were talking about the difference. Oh, we were talking about the differences in CPR, and again, like 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 uh, Kyle was saying. I was a Broward County lifeguard in, in Broward. I was a Boy Scout certified lifeguard. I loved water. I lived in the water. I lived in South Florida. Um, I was always taught you do your reps, you do your breaths, you do your reps, you do your breaths. As long as the airway is open and clear, you do your reps, you do your breaths. Now you're telling me don't do the breaths. Now, the, it, it Logic in my brain tells me if the person's not breathing, I'm going to breathe for them. If if their heart's not beating, I'm going to pump their heart for them. I mean, you're going to attempt it, right? How? But the old way. I'm not saying right, wrong, or otherwise. Okay, what I'm saying is we were taught that it was 
five or seven, um, depending on what year you took the class, five, whatever it was, you did breaths and you did three breaths. <laughs> then you did your reps again. And you did this in certain cycle numbers. So you're per not only pumping the heart, you're providing oxygen, pumping the heart because Jer the person Jersey is not Boy, breathing. Jersey Boy Outdoors said uh, the medical world is constantly changing, especially in today's times. Yeah, especially with yeah. the drug companies telling them what to do. That's that's well, that's a whole topic for a whole nother program. <laughs> but yes, you are correct. And, and technology is moving forward. But if it's me and, and, and Coyote and he's down and he's not breathing and he is not, his heart is not pumping. He has no pulse. I'm going to do what I was taught. I'm going to give him reps. I'm going to give him breaths. Obviously, I'm going to check his airwave. I'm going to tilt his head back. I'm going to do all the proper steps and procedures to give him CPR the way I was taught because he's not breathing and he's not. So we're going to give him and give him try to get everything going. Right, guys? Or wrong? That's the way I was trained. But my daughter came home and told me, you don't give breasts the now. And, and, and the reason for that is is because of all of uh, the contracting this and contracting that and da-da-da-da-da. But I hope oh, one of you it has it. Most first aid kits today, people come with, a, with a, a little piece of plastic with a hole in it. What is that? Whoa. Sorry. That's chip Sorry. Mode. <laughs> no, it's a baby raccoon oh, for my cell phone. Oh, all my I, ringtones. All, running through the room. All my ringtones are animal noises. <laughs> That's awesome. That's but awesome. I'm I'm the coyote. I they, make 85 I, animal noises with my voice. Ta yeah. Tactical technician said the uh, the Heart Institute has changed the CPR at least every four years. Right, and that's that's what I'm talking about. Mo, what's up? How Mo are you? Mom, Mo Homestead and happy Jersey Friday. Jersey Boys Outdoors, why are you doing that? Jersey Boys Outdoors. You got after, you got after five I got Cody already, yeah. You can actually make after five a mod. Can I do it? Oh. I think you can. Wait, no, I could do it. Oh, and you got... Um, I'm not drinking alcohol, but I'm drinking Coke. Neighbor. Like, hey, have a Coke and a smile, brother. Yeah. Neighbor, right? <laughs> um, I need after five, you need to comment so you pop up over here. Right's trapping. Brother Ray, how are you able and, and type at the same time? I can't do it. I don't know how you're doing it. I'm just two uh, devices. <laughs> no, I have the laptop. Yeah, that works a lot better. I used to do all my panels and live streams with the laptop. Uh, just the phone only is a little pain in the butt. Yeah, no, we've I, moved on to I, that. I, laptop is where the producer is sitting. I've got the 12-inch tablet, and then there's still another laptop in this house. So, I mean, <laughs> I've we can get it. I've got y'all double-screened on the laptop, the 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 video chat is over here and the writing is over here and so i can type on it i have to see i have to look to type i i can't broadcast i've never been able to do everything at once i mean being a radio jock if people well, if you go back on my my facebook you can see my old broadcast from the radio station i would run Facebook Live on one camera. I had it the radio station web system watching me on two other cameras while I'm running two digital turntables, three CD players, the phone, and a computer. It was, I mean, all at once most of the time. It, it And to be able to do this, I'm still getting there because I want you guys to be able to see me, and it, it's a challenge. But challenges are here to overcome. We're going to adapt. We're going to improvise, and we're going to overcome, and we have fun. So that's all that matters. <laughs> if you can't have doing it, then why do it? I, I got to show you all this kit. I've been fiddling while I've been letting you guys talk. I've been fiddling with it, and I've kind of been giggling to myself at some of the stuff that came in this kit. I've had this there's kit for a while. Not, there's not also kits, okay? There's. Um, I've been wanting to do a video on it. I, I might be mm -hmm. releasing some secret sauce here in the outdoors community. 
They're called uh, survival <laughs> cards. They have like a little knife in them. They got a little spear in them. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The little, the little credit cards. Yeah, they're little credit cards, and they got a whole bunch of little, little things for you to survive out in situations. So. Tactical Tech got one in his tack pack. I believe it was tack pack box number one. If you guys want to check that video out, he has a box, the monthly subscription box, and in one of them came the little multi card. Pretty neat. I mean, it fits in your wallet, but I know it's not exactly medical related, but that's something that could save, could your, save life. your life. Absolutely. A pocket knife, folks. Something as simple as a pocket knife could save your life. Your car keys. Look at the uh, life. It starts off. Let me reference the. I think it's the movie. What is that movie where he falls down the 20, 128 days later? Something like that, where he falls down the canyon and his arm gets trapped in between the rocks. Mm -hmm. and he has to take us I think it was a knife or something and you know do the dirty deed and lose an arm if he would have prepared or told somebody where he went before he might not have been in that situation yeah, yeah at the, oh it went away again I'm not fast the, enough the first <laughs> thing to always remember though when you're ever in a situation is to stay calm that's the Don't biggest end. thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, my wife, the producer, will freak out. Let me read this comment. Okay, hold on. Uh, yell at them to smile sometimes, producer. Ha, 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 ha. Tell them. Oh, there's more comments popped Tell up. Them I said so. Tell them I said so. You want us to smile more. Mo wants us to smile more, guys. So we got. let's do a smile for Mo. Smile, everybody. Peace. <laughs> She's probably we talking about me because my ankle's really bugging me and I'm in a lot of pain right now. So, uh, all hey, that for all, I don't even take a Tylenol. I'll deal with the Yeah, man. You got some Epsom? No, I don't. Epsom, it has it. You got to get some Epsom, bro. Epsom oh, salt? The Epsom salt for the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, that. not for the back. They have a particular one for the foot and the ankle area now. Get that Epsom salt in a bucket of hot water, hot as you can stand it, and sit in that sucker and just I, let it be. If not, if it's bothering you, like if it's sore, again, this is coming from 17 years of working with chiropractors. If it's sore, like it hurts, then you're going to want to ice for 15 minutes to take the swelling down. Hey, this is medically related in this. Um, you're going to want to do ice for 15 minutes, off for 15 minutes, heat for 15 minutes, off for 15 minutes. You're going to do this cycle four times. The ice, what the ice does is it removes the swelling. When you apply heat, you're relaxing the area that's swollen. So if you're only relaxing everything, you're just leaving a basic swollen bowl of mush. If you take the ice, you make the, the mush a little smaller. Then you relax it. Then you bring it smaller. And you do that four times, maybe six if it's really bothering you. But after four times, you should feel 100% better, almost. Tactical technician said smiling is for wusses. Yeah, no, man. If people smile more, there'd be less problems in this world, believe it or uh, not. Sure. Because it, it takes less effort to smile than it does, and it, it takes less down, muscle. It breaks down a barrier uh, than a frown. Than it does to frown. Yeah. Turn the frown upside down. Yay. Yeah, it makes Guys, I got to show you this kit. I got to show I you this kit. What are you to smile for? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Kyle, you're funny, bro. Um, don't forget to give video a thumbs up. Um, if you guys are new here, please consider subscribing. Check out my moderators. They're doing an awesome job. I do have to actually stop myself and make myself do this once in a while. If you guys want to check out anything Infantry Outdoors related, check us out at infantryoutdoors.com. Check out our webpage. You can find our merch, like I'm wearing our T-shirt, our Get Hook T-shirt. We've got a logo T-shirt. Tell your mom I wanted to see her. I got to get that posted up there. It's not up there yet. It's been a busy week trying to get back on the video grind. But go to infantryoutdoors.com. You'll be able to find our gear, our events, photo galleries, things like that. Um, also, check out the moderators. The moderators are blue because of a reason. The reason is they are family, and I mean family. Like, I have everybody's phone numbers and most people's addresses, so I know where they live, all right? They're family. Check them out. They're really great family. So, yeah, you know, they're better than family because I call them and they answer. <laughs> I call my family. And, You're sorry. The number you've called is disconnected. Um, but for real, check out the, the mods. Check out the guests on the show. 
they're awesome people. They're awesome channels. That's why they're here in front of us. That's why you watch them. That's why I watch them. And that's why they deserve the credit. So well, if they're moderators, check them out. And of course, check each other out too. I mean, everybody in here is working hard. We're all making videos, it's something for everybody. You know, with 320,000 uploads a day, I'm going to like more than one. I promise you that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think I've only given a thumbs down on one video in my entire YouTube watching career because I just didn't like the little boy cursing. And that was it enough for me. But we'll move on to this. I got to show you this kit. This is something, guys, I got it, believe it or not, at Walmart. Your local Wally World, whatever, in the camping department. Uh, first is what is it? Oh, first aid. It don't even have a brand on it. So, but what, what I've been laughing about in the background is some of the things that are included in here, which are, yeah, yeah, I'm not laughing. I never would have thought to put it in here. Right out the box, you got a glow stick. This right here is amazing that you have a glow stick in a first aid kit because what if it's nighttime? What if it's dark and you ain't got a flashlight? I just popped this open and said, <laughs> oh, crap, it's a glow stick. <laughs> So That's we, we a good signal stick. Signal stick. What it's called? Uh, what do they call it? A bright stick. Yeah, bright stick. I don't know how bright it is. They have be. like a helicopter coming in for you or something, which I yeah, you wave at them and you know. But it, I mean, there's a ton of use. Don't get me wrong. I'm making fun of it, but there's a ton of uses for this. All right. Um, I'm visually impaired. This would be better than walking in the dark. You can um, break it, crack it open, and make a trail with it. Exactly. You could make drips. In the dark and find your way back. Did you know that one? You, you're Crap. camping. You come out of the beach at night. You get a splinter in your foot. You can't see it. You got a light. You got a light. Yep. yep. You drop your car keys in a dark ass hole and you can't find them. You got a light. So that's item number one. <laughs> but it, Howdy, the Trey. now, what I think is really cool on this is when I open it up. I took out the glow stick that was sitting right here because obviously it would have fallen out to you guys. But this thing has pockets here, pockets here, pockets here, pockets here that you can talk little whatevers. In this case, they have uh, this is an insect sting relief kit or whatever pad that you can put if you get stung by something, which we all have done that before, I'm sure. Um, and by the way, bumblebees don't kill the bumblebees. They only sting you if you really piss them off, but they're good. This is one that kind of made me laugh. Lip balm. They got two packs of lip balm. So if your lips get chapped, we got some chapstick <laughs> in, a, in a pack. Lip balm. You, you, you don't want her to have chapped lips when she's hiking, folks. She's, you know, got to have smooth, silky skin. So what does that say? Howie, folks? Trey, what's up, Trey? Happy Friday, Trey. Cheers to you. Uh, producer, I'm going to need another one, please. All right. So. <laughs> Uh, done with the bomb. Moving on, we got, I think these are ouchy boo boo bent. What is this? Now, mind you, I'm a blind person reading this stuff. So, manufacturing companies aren't doing horrible. The, I can read the big print. Uh, what does that say? Oh, one, two, three packs of sunscreen. We're going to put that over here with the, with the lip balm. But I got here, producer, is SPF what? <laughs> I'm curious. 30. SPF 30. Hot dog. We're not getting a sunburn today. This, this might cover one of these. might, like, cover your nose. <laughs> what do you guys think of that so far? Are you guys chuckling as much as I am over there or what? I don't hear nothing. Y'all are too quiet for guests. What's going on, tubby guy? Tubby guy, tubby guy how are you? Happy Friday. Okay, now this one, insect protection cream. Are you kidding me? Bones. Is this going to do anything for you, bro? Well, yeah. we were talking about that last uh, episode with, uh, with the with yeah. the insect creams and the the dryer well, look, wipes and. Look at this. Look, I, I don't know if if the camera does it justice, brother, but it's two Is inch it tall. An afterbite cream, though, to help mm. the inflammation of a bite. It says insect protection cream, and I can't read the rest of it. So we're just going to say insect protect. I hope it's like, you know, itch remover, but it might be bug repellent. It would make sense in a first aid kit, but a package that big? Come on, what you going to do with that? 
You can't even cover like one butt cheek with a little pe- little I pack that big. To know what size the glow stick takes. What size the glow what stick? What size battery? Excuse me. What size battery the glow stick takes? <laughs> well, that depends on the glow stick. Um, watch out now. Remember, I have been a DJ for over 30 That's years. Okay, so moving on. Something we can actually use, and I'm sure all of us fellas can agree on. Look at this. This is from Walmart now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve alcohol pads. So that's really good. That is useful. Anybody wanna one of my guests wanna explain what alcohol pads in a first aid kit would use for? While you guys explain it, I'm gonna get the next item out. That's how we're gonna do this. That work? Yes. If you stick a bunch of them in your mouth and, and suck real hard, it might take away the pain. Oh, That's no, what no. Donald Trump said. If you, if you eat this, it'll get rid of the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't, don't, dude. don't listen to Boons, man. Yeah, don't. No. <laughs> but seriously, guys, why are you the next item out? Hey, what will we use these pads for, and why are they in the first aid kit? Whoever oh, wants to take it. Great fire starter. Okay. That's a good one. Keep going, cause y'all got to keep educating while I'm 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 busy here getting your next item ready. If you have I'm to use a needle or a, a knife or something to cut out a thorn or something, you can sanitize with that. Okay, and sanitize is meaning by the item you're going to not only use yeah. on the person needle, but the person themselves. Knife. Right, right. Okay, so the next thing we have here, boys and girls, is ouchy boo boo band aids. We've got butterfly closures here, which I think if I hold it like this, you guys can see the bandage through the light. Can you? Because I can. Can y'all see Stop. what the bandage looks like? I can't. You got to kind of help me out. Closer, closer, closer. Closer, closer, closer. It's still the reflection of your light. Yeah, there we go. A little bit closer. A little bit closer. Oh. This way, this way, this way, or that way. Right. Uh, there, there right we go. There, right there. Yeah, the nose right band there. Don't is, move. Stop the light from snoring. Turn it. Caddy walk the sun. I can't yeah. go that way. Then it'll fold. There. How's that? We got the view. We got the view. Yeah. Okay. We, we so saw these, are, these are like we said, butterfly bandages. When you guys want to take that one. Oh, I can see it now. Eight seconds later. Um, butterfly bandages. What would you need that for? Uh, or like when. I had a cut across my hand. You use them to close up that cut or something. Uh, so it would be used in a jointed area, you'd say, right? You would, with the combination of the crazy glue, suture your, exactly. your own clothes yeah. with yeah. those. Yep. yep. Very true. Now, again, these have, so that I don't know if you guys did see it, but it has a fat part, a little skinny part, a fat part. The reason for this is, that if you have part it, doesn't uh, have the sticky right it's so that if you have to bend or move if you get cut here and it moves now that's a small one i really don't know what the hell you would use i mean but yeah to, there you go close up wounds when you can't use stitches now the next one are just general bandages let's see if i can get you guys a a see-through view of this tell me if that works for you Tubby guy says uh, he apologized. Four thirty comes early in the morning. No worries, brother. Have a great night. Awesome. Stay safe and healthy. Have a good one, bro. God bless you, bro. You have a safe night, and uh, thank you for being part. Of Jersey boys, Jersey boys, thank you for stopping in. And you guys in the chat, by the way, if you have anything uh, related to this, drop it in the comments. My guests, the producer, will make sure that we get your comments. And we will address them because it's not just about us. It's about you. We're learning from our fellow creators. We're learning from each other. Um, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, nor have I ever claimed to be. I just take what little bit of knowledge life, God, and Boy Scouts have taught me, and I'm applying it to YouTube. So my spin and a twist on it is I don't have the vision that you do. So I'm doing this what they call legally blind i'm not able to drive if that sums it up so if i can do it there's no reason you can't do this so try it at home um yeah we have bandages i mean these are regular standard bandages that i would put on my child to be honest with you it's small now i could work for a small abrasion small cut small something like that but to be honest Burns. with you 
to you be honest with you, you burn yourself. You want to cover it up because anything that touches it afterwards is gonna not feel I, so I feel, pleasant. Yeah, I feel you, but I would. I mean, the bandage is so small. I would just not wear one. That's me, but I'm not telling you not to do that. But um, next item up for grabs, guys. What do you, let's see? We, now we're getting into some like normal size bandages. Yes, these are ouchy boo boos. I got an ouchy boo boo, and I need a band aid. This is your standard size. You buy at the store band aid. Uh, then we got another pack. So it gives you one, two, the whole bunch, three rolls of ouchy boo boo band aids. Which those are always great because you know if you got kids and listen, I have two boys. One of them just ran into the countertop the other night. Still trying to figure out how he did that. Um, yeah. Then we got more bandages. These are. Let me look through the light here. These are a little bit bigger, wider, but they're your standard band aid. You have the pad in the middle. You know, they're just a little bit bigger in size, which is good. These are fuzzy pads. I don't know. Maybe y'all know, but are too. I guess you peel the back off, and it's just adhesive. But it's fuzzy. Oh, I know what they are. They're for uh, when you get uh, blisters. Oh, blister oh, see, learning from our fellow creators. Do 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 do. do. Yeah. So, blister pads. Good job, Coyote. I got to start putting some of this stuff back because we're going to end up overflowing the table. So by all means, while I'm cleaning up a little bit, if y'all want to chit chat, Boons, Coyote, mention something or comment somebody, any band -Aid. Technician said his wife and him are going to make first aid kits for so. That's awesome. Hey, and if y'all ain't checked out Tactical Technicians merch, check it out. Um... Mike, go ahead, drop that link, dude, for your merch, if you don't mind. Remember, you do need to come prepared when you come in the live streams, my family, because I'm going to promote you. I'm going to, if you remind me, I'll put everybody up here. Okay. I'll mention everybody because that's what I promised you, and that's what we do. Um, next item up for sale. Miller go ahead. Doors is in. Who's that? Mills Miller. Outdoors. Mills. 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 Happy, happy Friday. Thanks for coming in. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. And have an awesome weekend. Cheers. All right. So we all know what these are. Coal pack. Coal packs. Now, Coyotes Military, uh, Boons, I don't know if you might know a few of the tricks and tray of the trades of the coal pack. Coyote, you know what I'm talking about? You know where I'm going? Hold it in your hand and smack it. Right, but that's that that okay. For you get it to activate. Yeah. Let, let me try this again. For <laughs> for medical use, you're going to crack <laughs> stuff inside of here and it's going to get cold. Now, Coyote, do you know of any other military uses to use this for? Come on, I know you got to. I wasn't even in the military and I know. No, I can't you can use it to start fire right now. If you uh, add see. something else to it, yeah, there you I'm go. On that one, but yeah, yeah, I'm getting close. You can make fire with it. You can make fire with it. It's, the, it, it, it. it's what ends up happening is there's a chemical reaction that happens in here that makes it cold. So obviously, there's a way for the chemical reaction. I don't know what's in it. I mean, here we go. No warning. Hold on here. I'm going to read you guys the warning. Don't do this, okay? I'm going to try as soon as I get off the stream. Watch. Uh, not to be used by persons with circulatory problems. Uh, keep out of reach of my children. Of course, we know that. Harmful if we eat it. So Donald Trump says drink a pack of this a day. Um, <laughs> if, <laughs> if accidentally swallowed, contact the Poison Control Center. So do you guys kind of get where I'm going with this? It doesn't tell me what's in this. So uh, might not tactical technician said it might. Uh, Mike, yeah, food. Mike, I know. It'd be good to keep your food cold, but uh, not if it gets in your food. Yeah, no. Well, it's sealed. It's sealed. Uh, it's in a package. Let's see. Contains. Here we go. It is U R E A urea. <laughs> urea. Yeah, urea and water. 
So there's piss and water in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> and when you shake it and crack it, piss and water makes cold. What the well, hell? Damn, it's, a, it's good for the beer. What kind of planet <laughs> do we live on where you're going to tell me pee and water makes a cold pack? What the? Okay. Isn't that what a Corona is? <laughs> That's why it's only 5%. Four <laughs> percent, whatever it is. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, Mister Up Norther. We don't get to have alcohol like you do. Okay, our beer sucks. Yes, we know. Ooh, real beer, but it's all we can get. So I don't drink. drink. <laughs> I mean, I'll be lucky if this damn beer is over three percent. I mean, come no, on. I take a good bottle of Canadian whiskey any day. Oh yeah, Canadian Club. Let me tell you something. I grew up on Canadian Club. My dad was a performer, and he always got Canadian Club from the Snowbirds every year. It was bottles and bottles and bottles of Canadian Club, and uh, it starts out nasty, but when you become an adult and you drank it for so long, it's not bad. Uh, it's good <laughs> with the ginger ale. Yeah, 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 it is. Yep. Yeah. So next item up for grabs. Can you tell me what we have without taking it out of the package? Dun, 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 dun. A reflector. No. <laughs> a space well, blanket. It well, could be at this point. I'm flashing you. I'm flashing you. It's one of those uh, emergency blankets. You got yep. it. You're warm. Now. Make a tent. Well, but there but you as go. a signal, you can lay it out flat on a place. And like if a helicopter is looking for you or something, it's a great signal thing too. Yep. Wrap it around a stick with some duct tape. You got a damn signal flag that reflects. Yep. See? Think about that. Like you're at the damn football game. We are, we are. Yeah, so. Just don't do it in a lightning storm. <laughs> yeah, no, this is mylar. It is metal. It will. If you do have a fire, I'm surprised uh, I didn't hear this one come up. If you have a fire and you want to reflect the fire towards you, yeah, put this on some works. sticks like this at an angle and put the blanket like this. And your fire, let me see if I can do it in the, in the camera view. It's going to tilt like this. Technical and your technician wants to know if we're going to be making D DIY ice packs. With, yeah, with we can. Bro, pee and pee water. And water. If you mix pee with water, it gets cold. That's what the pocket said. <laughs> this one, next one says, of course, you have to brand it. Total Resource Incorporated. I don't know if you're going to be able to make it out on the camera. I know what it is. I'm just not going to say in case you can make it out. Are they gloves? Yep. You got it, Coyote. What are we going to Obviously. I mean, that's an obvious one, but again, this is first aid for people that don't know. What will we need latex gloves for? Oh, if you're doing something and you don't want to get I think I your dirty hands in the wound and stuff, you can put gloves on. But you could also use them for collecting water. Uh, you can you collect your them. water and make an ice pack in a rubber glove. Uh, <laughs> it, it any of those plastic packages that you've held up, uh, don't ever throw them away. Because if you get a, a sucking uh, chest wound, you can use that to cover it up. Okay. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Because <laughs> you can close... Uh, I, I guess in military, we learned sucking chest wounds and stuff. And you take down three sides of a, a plastic whatever over the wound. And that mm. way they can breathe out, but they won't suck it back in. You're making a one-way valve, essentially. Basically. Yes, sir. Out of a rubber glove. That's pretty damn cool. Yep. See, and this so is why we any, learn. Okay. Any of the rubber plastic packages that you had. Okay. That's very good to know. Very good to know. Boons, your thoughts on rubber gloves? Uh, I mean, you're laughing over there. It's not just to keep, you know, well, things from not uh, I'm reading I'm reading comments that might not be yeah. appropriate to yeah, I you know I miss <laughs> a lot by being blind. I hope you people understand. Oh good. That. Sometimes I it, go it's through. worth missing. You know the damn producer's back there laughing her ass off, and I can't <laughs> read none of what's going on. My wife could be remarried and have kids by now, and I would never know because the chat's so small. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she just, the producer just said, <laughs> so let's be in the snow. She, yeah, and she figured out that if she typed, she could put stuff up there for you guys. So that's a recent occurrence, too. 
Um, <laughs> Every time I let the dog out in the winter, it makes a Canadian ice pack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, well, yeah. Swamp, do swamp Docky. I wrote that. Said <laughs> tech valve. Who knew? Exactly. The, the information right. that, you, that you learn in these streams sometimes and watching that's why i love youtube man is all the so information you love your brother. Happy Friday. and the lion cook the lion cook love your brother happy friday oh boy all right so rubber gloves not just for making love um for other things you're using well. it for that yeah exactly you're... That was a comment that was avoided. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to go there. I mean, yeah. you went everywhere else. So, guys, here we go. If you don't use the rubber gloves, you're going to probably need these in the morning. No, um, uh, yeah. You, you, you can yeah, use you them for to, covering a cow's udders. If you don't use rubber gloves, you're going to need Quick Clean. And it's not a Billy Mays product, so I can't help that you there. Kit was a Walmart kit, right? Yeah, this was a Walmart kit, everybody, that we're going through. This is just showing you what you can grab off the shelf at a store and how many uses you can get out of the product that you get off the shelf. Now, mind you, we are talking to Big Boone's YouTube channel and we are talking to Coyote from Wright's Trapping. Uh, <laughs> brother Coyote is a US military vet, retired. Thank you for your service, brother. And um, we're getting a little military insight well, on that. Mo Homesteading asked if that was just a Walmart kit. Yes, that we're going yes, through. through. Yep. This is called Quick Clean Antiseptic Hand Wipes. So you can't wipe your bum with this, but you can wipe your hands with it. Um, you wipe hand your wipe. hands with it after you wipe your bum. There you go. You clean the bum <laughs> off your hands. <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty much <laughs> self-explanatory. Um, and that's that pocket. I mean, <laughs> and, and the thing that impresses me, guys, is with this Walmart kit. Now, Boone, you got Walmart in Canada. Oh, of course. Okay. They took, they took over. Oh, it's like well, everywhere else, man. Sorry about that. Um, uh, <laughs> they took over here, too, so don't feel yeah. too bad. No, now, I'm not feeling bad. The pockets that I have in here, there is a lot. There's room for expansion in this kit. And, Mo, this is the kit that you would find in the Walmart camping department. Now, what I am going to tell you is don't shop for your damn first aid kit in the Walmart camping department. Don't do it because the reason is it gives you a nice kit. Oh, look, I found more goodies. See, there's pockets. No, this, one we got this one, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Now, Mo, I got this one coming up. Okay. This one coming up. And we've got this one, which is... Pretty much like this one, but was cheaper because it was in the home or the pharmacy department. The same crap you get in the camping department costs more than the stuff you get in the pharmacy department. And it's the same freaking box. It's the same stuff. All right. So don't get duped by the camping department. There was don't no get duped. Is there any anything else in the, the kit you're showing? No, there is, man. Hold on. We're going to move okay. to this. A lot quicker. I don't want to jump jump the gun and start out. Yeah, no, no. We got some nail file or boards or tongue suppressors. If somebody's having a seizure, you can pin their tongue down with this. Um, right, guys? Go ahead. I'm going to start yeah. rifling through this. So here we go. Tongue you can use them as finger sprints. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and cover those topics. These are Q-tips. If you can't see through the bag, we got a bag of Q-tips. God, you know you can use those everywhere for everything. First aid and now. Yeah, you could use those for a lot of things, believe it or not. You can make a fly. If you needed a fish and you poof this out right here, you can make a fly out of this and catch a damn fish. I bet you. Now watch somebody make a YouTube video and I don't get credit. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the case. All yeah, right. Yeah. Then you're out and make fire starter. This is a roll of tape. And I'm not going to tell you what kind of tape because I don't know. But I'm going to peel some. It rips easy. It's sticky tape. It's smooth on this side. So it's not like, I don't want to say medical tape because medical tape is kind of like a Band-Aid. This is like smooth as can be. And probably, I don't know if you guys see it as shiny. It's not the most, like if I touch it, 
two or three times is not very sticky anymore. So you get this. That I would tie a knot. Tape. Yeah, if you wrap this on something, you better tie a damn knot to it. But if you, uh, it, it's more for like uh, like burns or sunburns. You want it to stick, but you don't want it to stick. Right. Well, no, it and will stick so the first time. It will stick the first time. After yeah. you take it off and do that two or three times, it won't stick no more. We got safety pins, not just for diapers. I don't even know if anybody does that anymore. Safety pins. If, if a, you don't have needle and thread, that's great to close up a wound. A janky pair of tweezers. I mean, no. No. That's no, a fine point tweezers for like uh no, like if I grab it, it's pl it's made of plastic. The whole thing is plastic. So if I put pressure to try to get something even out, you can't apply pressure. Like yeah. I won't break it before I grab my actual skin. Um, I mean, in a pinch, <laughs> not to be a joke, but they they're they're here. But get a real pair of tweezers. That's I mean, why you always go through your medical kit uh, before you actually go to the woods. I was about to give Coyote credit for saying that earlier. And that's very true. Another one in the chat says uh, duct tape is their go-to uh, swamp donkey. Said duct tape that. is God. Duct, duct tape will fix everything. Yep. That is God's fix-all. All right, guys, a lot of crap in here. So here we go. We got uh, da, 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 da. a first aid guide. Hot Works. dog. We going to teach you first aid. Got that. So we got a uh, gauze pad. Go ahead, guys. Gauze pads. Gauze pads? Yep, gauze pads. Straights. Bigger, bigger wounds. Mind you, gauze pads. You're going like to need that tape. Gauze, gauze pad. Gauze pad. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I was just going at. Gauze pads have no adhesive. It is just a bandage. Yeah, it's just material. a big, big pad to either fill a, fill the wound. That's what the tape is for. Also, again, that's, that's another good fire for. starter. Again, yep, good fire starter. Okay, here's another one. Sterile extra absorbent ABD pad, 5-inch by 9-inch. So for those in Canada, it's 12.7 centimeters by 22.8 centimeters. Thank you for that multi- you know, multi country. Multi yeah, we, we take we multi measurements. Earlier, when we were talking earlier, infantry, uh -huh. uh, get lady pads and tampons. Yeah. And yeah. Throw them yeah. yeah. Kit because yeah. if you have a big, big wound, uh, that's the best thing to use, yeah. really. Okay, we've got some non aspirin aspirin. Um, if you have a nosebleed. Yeah, the you military has a yeah. uh, tampon in your nose and it'll stop the nosebleed. Yeah. My my dad were coyote now we're talking about was my dad was in construct my whole family were construction workers back in the sixties, seventies, and eighties. Um, and he always had a medical kit in his truck. Part of his medical kit was which I never understood till I got older, why you have mom's pads in the truck. And he was like, well, if you cut yourself with a circular saw or a chop saw or a skill saw or this saw. It's not going to be a little ouchy boo boo like no. you're used to. You're going to slap that maximum strength Kotex on there and wrap it and get your butt to the hospital as fast as you can. But that that thing is going to take care of a large area where you can't get a little ouchy boo boo to do. When you and, when you hit a vein, it's not uh, dripping out of you. It's squirt squirting out a few oh, feet yeah. away sometimes, especially like he said. My dad cut his arm pretty good with the circular saw, got into one of the veins, and it went 10 feet across the room, hit the wall. Oh. So. Well, in the military now, they, uh, in the medical kit, they have this syringe-looking thing. It's probably that big around. Uh, and it has, like, they're, they're only, like, that big, but they're basically miniature tampons. And there's a, a bunch of them in this thing, and you shove it into the wound, and you just shove them in there, and they expand yeah, and will close up the wound until you can get them to the medical center. So you get two rolls of crappy tape. Um, real quick, guys, we've got non-aspirin aspirin, non-aspirin non pill, uh, aspirin, 
We've got antibiotic ointment, burn cream. Got to have burn cream. And let me tell you all something I learned that, that I don't know if many people have even heard of. This stuff called colloidal silver. Um, it comes in a bottle. It's a liquid. It's basically bioactive silver water. Um, it's what they, believe it or not, back in the day before these people invented antibiotics. It's what the hospitals used as an antibiotic treatment. Um, if you happen to have some laying around and you do get a burn, you put a few drops of that on there and it don't burn no more. So Dr. I've done it myself. So food for thought. Tactical technician said he cut his arm with the in in the shop one day and he had to use a, a shop towel to stop the bleeding. Yeah. You, when you're in a spot, you do what you got to do. You make what you got to make. Like, like I said, I cut the finger. It was duct tape and a pencil that held it together for two weeks. Uh, this is a good one, guys. Poison Ivy Oak and Sumac Cleanser. I've never had that, but if you happen to get it, it sucks. So, uh, do you all have sting and nettles in Florida? I can't remember. What is it? Sting and netta. I don't know what that is. Okay. I, I guess it's only it, – it's a plant that you rub up against it, and you feel like you've been burned. I have that. In my it, backyard, it, yeah. I know what you're talking about. It's like you get okay. got a bunch of slivers or hit a yeah. cactus, uh, and it doesn't go away for a while. The of the stinging is look for a fern plant near it. They have uh, the the little bitty shoots when they're like little curly cues down at the bottom. Pull those off, mash it up, and rub it over that area, and it'll get rid of the stinging. Okay. I have not encountered that one yet, but not to say that it's not here. We have it out here quite a bit, and I have run into quite a bit of it. Uh, I do have. Yeah, it's not fun in, so in, in with no uh, socks and sandals on. Oh, no. <laughs> I have you know, it in my backyard. So. You know what really sucks is, is I learned this the other day making today's video, the hammock video that you guys love so much. Um, <laughs> I got st I stepped in a fire ant pile. Ooh, let me tell you. Fire when I was younger, I got covered from the armpits down by fire ant. Oh, um, no, 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 no. That's I like have a phobia of ants now. If you look at my foot right now, it looks like 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 I have cancer or something. There's bumps every. My wife even saw it. She's like, "Wow, you got it good." I'm like, "Yeah," and it feels like I got it good. Stupid not a answer. clue in the house. Yeah, Ramsey Hello, Country came in uh, a few minutes ago. Ramsey Country, happy Friday oh, to you, family. Uh, cheers, everybody. We all need to take a drink there for a minute. All right, so that's your basic Walmart. Well, that is Walmart's uh, first aid kit. As you guys seen, there is a lot of stuff in there. Everything in there is important. Everything in there has a purpose, has a job, and it's going to save your life. So understand that. Um, the other kits basically are bigger versions of that. I don't want to sit here and go through first aid kits all night because we'll be here, literally be here for longer than four hours. Um, but what I do want to touch on is your basic this type, this is a bigger version. I mean, it, it's what I leave in my truck. I don't even know if it's open yet. I don't even know if we can open it. Can we open it? Or is it going to explode? I don't know. What do you guys think? Should it blow up? Okay. Now, mind you, these are kits that you buy. You can make your own kit. You can find all of the stuff you need around your house and make a first aid kit. See, this is this is actually pretty nice. This one, this one is, look, everything's nice and packaged in this one. Individually, Judith, Judith Davis just uh, joined the stream. Judith, Friday. Hey, Judith. Friday. Bob Seattle, or, um, not a clue fishing. Not a clue fishing. Happy Friday, family. Cheers. So this one's got it. These are pretty much alcohol wipes and band aids and wipes. You got 24 alcohol wipes. You've got 21 antiseptic wipes. You've got nine sting relief wipes, and you have one poison ivy wipe. But so you better hope you don't get poison ivy. Get stung a few times, but don't get no ivy, or you're screwed. Don't um, use the alcohol wipes on the bum. 
Yeah, and don't use it. Yeah, don't use the one and only poison ivy wipe on your butt either. You're in trouble. So this one now says ointments. We've got hey, this is pretty nice. This one gives you a card to tell what the hell's in there. Um, what does that say? Antibiotic ointment. We've got burn cream. We've got insect repellents. We have, and there's only four of those, and they're probably only yay big, so I ain't going to do spit. Um, two lip ointments. So the lips, remember the guys, when you take the lady into the woods, the lips got to stay nice and nice. You got two packets, so you only got two days worth. <laughs> okay, terrible. about uh, dry lips and stuff. Uh, if you're in the woods for expend extended periods of time, like I go for a month and a half, can't wait till October. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. my hands and my arms dry out. Uh, my whole, all my skin starts drying out about three days into the trip, and then I start getting cracks in my hands. So take a bottle of lotion to keep. Yeah, yeah. But but also I've learned washing my hands with uh soapy water will actually help my hands more than just putting the lotion on. Well, remember we are mostly water. So keep that in mind. That's the number one lotion that God made. Um we got tablets, yeah, guys. I'm, I'm not gonna read everything that's on the thing. We got tablets. This is the biggest thing right here. Um Let's say first you get your first aid guide and it's got all the extra goodies in it. So basically, and these are kits I got at Walmart. So you guys can, if you want them, you can check them out. I have them. Obviously they do work. They take care of the job. They're there for an emergency situation, whether I'm on the boat, whether I'm on the kayak, whether the, now I'm going to tell y'all something that I did not know. Okay. At least I, in the United States of America and the state of Florida, I promise you, that if you get a fish hook in your hand and you call 911 to have a paramedic come because your husband's handicapped and can't drive and your wife's got a damn fish hook in the hand she needs to drive, you know, a paramedic going to just give you a $750 ride to the hospital. They can't pull the fish hook. Out. I looked the paramedic in the face and I said, sir, here's a pair of pliers. Grab the damn fish hook and pull it out. No, 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 no. We can't do that. Why not? I, she can't drive. How the hell am I supposed to get me and the kids to the hospital? Here's a pair of two, two paramedics that could not get a fish hook out of her hand. I mean, at the end of the day, I told them, go ahead and leave because I'm not paying for the hospital ride that you're going to charge. I'll have somebody take her. Uh, it, but it blew my mind. Their liability nope. situation. They can provide medical to keep you alive, but they can't provide medical other than that yeah they're not a taxi to the hospital for minor situations well obviously Pretty in this much. case they were because how many of us have had fish hooks in your hands if, raise your hand everybody in the damn chat should be raising your hand if you fish if you right. fish you've had a freaking hook in you have you I'm ever had a treble hook in three fingers no, but she did a, it was a nope. trouble it was definitely a trouble hook but I, I had a no, I had a treble hook in my index finger. I had the other part of the treble hook in my uh, other finger. And then I had the other treble hook part of the treble hook in my thumb all at the same time. Now that you, you probably have to go to hospital I was, for. I was but stuck still, like this. Seriously, seriously, what I'm talking about is the treble hook was in her hand just or in her thumb just past the barb. Just past the barb. Oh. Now, I'm not asking you to walk on water. I'm not asking you to turn wine into water. Uh, water into wine. I'm telling a paramedic, dude, get the damn fish hook out. If I could see, I would grab it with a pair of pliers and we're done. Were End you casting? Story. No. What happened? What happened? Ready well, for that, this? What that's happened? a catch of a lifetime. No, no, There's no, no, a no. way to <laughs> what take what a and wrap it around. <laughs> If she you have, have uh, the wife's always a catch in a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're we're at twenty years together, dude. Twenty one years together. We believe me. We 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 got together and stayed together. You you know you can take a fishing line and wrap it around the hook 
it and didn't go, it didn't go there what with that tell tell that story now this is in the case of well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lay the scenario out you're fishing and the hook went in your hand no, it was in the top of my not I've you it not my buddy it, it has right to go in his in you and out of you for this trick that he's talking about to work if the barb doesn't or if the no. end of the hook doesn't come out of you what you're about to say will not no. apply yeah. No, it, you can. It, it's so when the barb doesn't come all the way out, when it just goes in, you can wrap uh, not monofilament line, but the other one. Braid. Um, braid. Yeah. It's got to be braid because it's going yeah, to it, cut. It, what we're talking it has, about. It has to be braid because it gets in up under the uh, barb so it'll come out of the skin. Right. Now, if it's already pushed all the way through, and the barb is sticking out, then you can just cut the barb off and pull the hook back yeah. out. Go back through, right. Absolutely. That, I've done that numerous times. But yep. if the barb is stuck in your skin and you can't get to the barb, you can take braid and wrap it. I, I've seen it on Guggen Squad and a, f a few other fishing yeah. channels. It's like this. Here's the hook. The hook is is in somebody, okay, which would be down here into my hand. I'm sure I'm gonna do this the best I can with my finger, family. I've seen you're gonna wrap the line one, two, three. So you have your line, three wraps, and the tag in a long tag in. You're then gonna wrap the tag in around this finger. You're gonna wrap the line around this finger. The hook is in my skin but the line is wrapped at the very base where the hook and the skin meet you're going to then go one two poof, and don't go to three and pull pull before they even pay attention because this is going to hurt family bah, and it pops the hook out of the skin yep. that's how it's done it doesn't hurt that bad I, i've had it done to me three times you well, you yeah, you're a tough guy, bro. Hey, I, listen, men, all men aside, okay. I need wood. I need wood. It hurts. I, wood I, I, I wants to say it hurts. hurts. I'm a baby when they go. I gotta prick your finger with the needle. No, I don't do needles. I don't. No blood. I don't I'm, do I'm, needles I'm, either. Blood, well, I'll pass out. I'll pass out unless I'm saving your life. True story. But I've also been hit by lightning, and I've also been hit with nine thousand volts out of an arcade game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Did you at least get the bonus prize? <laughs> uh, I died both times. Wow. And uh, the, 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 when I got hit with 9,000 volts out of an arcade game, it was at Disney World down there at Florida. I was a uh, uh, circuit board repair person for the arcades down yeah. there. And uh, some kid had lost some money, and I was trying to get his money back when I reached in to hit the coin return i brushed up against a wire that somebody had cut i landed right at the foot of a, a lifeguard and she brought me back with cpr wow that's wild I, that's my chest wild, hurt dude. after that and i've seen some wild stuff my dad was an electronic technician growing up as a kid and we've worked on tvs transistor radios cbs um keyboards guitars microphones you name it we've had it but the time i, I used to do that until my hand started shaking too much. The, the time I remember was he was fixing the TV. And this TV was built in the wall before there was wall TVs. He, he built it in the wall. He turned it around, had no back on it, and he had to do something. And he always told me, son, when you unplug something, you let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes so all the capacitors inside have a chance to discharge and lose their yeah. ability to kill you. Yeah. But what you never, ever, ever do is stick a screwdriver. Now, what I'm telling you is, is basically the storyline of what happened. You never, ever, ever stick the damn screwdriver anywhere near the ends of a capacitor because it might or might not be charged. Well, Bo Boxy's, Boxy's leaving. Boxy, it's you have been, an awesome been fun, guys. Weekend. Have a good night, Boxy. Have a, have a blessed weekend. Yeah, man, and we look forward to seeing you next Boxy. week. Hey, before it gets too late, I do want to take the opportunity for everybody in the chat that's here to have an opportunity to pick next week's topic because I think if we wait to the end, then we only have a few folks left, and I really would like to get the people in the chat's opinion. So what I want you guys to do is comment while we're chit-chatting in the chat what topic should we cover next week. 
We've done camping. We've done campfire cooking. We've done fishing. Tonight's first aid. What do we, uh, Boone's and I, we did hike. You know, we've done a bunch of things. Now we can always go back to lesson 102. If you're happy with what we're teaching you and we're happy with what you're learning, which everybody is sending me wonderful comments on and I appreciate. Um, I want you guys to be able to, to not only be picking the topic, if you want to be next week's guest, we need to know if, if you're interested and if you are professional in the topic that we're discussing. Now, I don't mean that you do this for a living. I don't mean that you're certi you know, EMT certified. I'm not a, yeah, I'm not a right. professional EMT. None so. of us, we're, we're learning from each other. Now, Coyote is, is, is military, so he has military knowledge we don't have. Boons, he might have knowledge you don't have. I might have Boy Scout, Eagle Scout knowledge you don't have. The whole point of this is as long as you know what you're talking about and you're not coming on a panel just to be on the panel, then I'm happy to have you on. We want to keep the topics going. You guys learn. You love from well, – and it carries us on for hours because I want the passionate people up here talking about your topic. Make sense? Makes sense to me. That's why you guys are here because you're passionate about what you do. You know what you're doing, and we're having a good stream. So – I used to be EMT qualified and I used to be firefighter qualified and I used to have my first aid response qualifications from the military. But that was. And Mike, tactical technician, he's military as well. So, you know, having him in the chat, putting anything, his info into the chat, that's again more not. I want you guys to be in the chat. If we're holding up an ouchie boo boo band aid and you've never seen it before, then tell me. I'll I'll break the damn thing out of the package and we'll show you. Um, if there's something you saw us cover tonight that you want me to go backwards on and come back, hey, can we talk more about this? Can we talk more? Put it in the comments, people. But what I'm going to give the producer a job instead of giggling and laughing with you guys is I need you guys to drop comments of what we're going to cover next week. You can do anything in the outdoors community. Um, and she's going to actually take a poll. She's going to figure out what topic has the most um response from you guys and by the end of the night that's the one we're going to pick also if you want to be a guest on next week's show talking about your topic drop it in the comments below the producer will write it down you the comment went away too quick i just about to read it <laughs> how about look put the comment and leave it until i read it or until somebody reads it because okay. it's too fast i i mean i'm oh, eight, I got, eight I seconds belly. i rub his belly <laughs> Rub his belly. <laughs> my, my dog is sitting in my lap, infantry. Oh, yeah. No, you're in the little window for me here. Let me see. Oh, there Yeah, it it's is. probably hard for you to see us like this, but. Yeah. That's what Dingo. He? What a, He's my service dog. Wants. That's a good dog, man. Dingo. What a good name. I'm surprised. Well, mine is. <laughs> mine's right here on the floor. <laughs> you can't find me without finding her. Like, to, it gets to the point where I get mad at her because. She's your shadow. Oh, well, you but listen, a little bit to the bad point because I'm out here barbecuing hot uh, hamburger tonight, and you know you have hamburgers, and your two kids are in the house, and you have the deep fryer getting ready to go with some onion rings. Yeah. You got to go from inside to outside, to inside to outside, to inside to outside, and guess yeah, who wants to go around. inside to outside, inside to outside, inside to outside to the point where I forgot her outside. And you know what happens when you forget her outside? My dog talks. My dog will tell you what time it is. She will bark at you. She will growl at you. She will let you know that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. If she has, she got to go to the bathroom. She's already going like looking at me, and then it's and then if I tell her, don't. It's nighttime. Don't tell me. Tell mommy. She will literally go over to my wife and then start until you take her out. Amazing dogs are amazing. Amazing Ether animal. Does that too. That's why they're uh, man's best friend. We can relate with them, I think. Hundred uh, percent, bro. Hundred percent. Matter of fact, on this mantle behind me, species. Mo 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 was asking right uh, what the question was. Uh, the question uh, infantry was asking was, "What do you want? What does everybody want to see next week? The next week's uh, stream." Right. What do we want to talk about next Friday for next Friday stream and? Do you want to be a guest on said topic? Now, you have to have knowledge in your topic. If we talk about first aid, you I don't want you to come here and go, yeah, infantry, I put a ouchie boo-boo band-aid on my son the other day because he slipped on the roller skates. 
that's first aid, but that's not where we are tonight. The people I have here, we could talk about tourniquets, I'm sure. We could talk about uh, uh, creating, which I want to talk about because of Coyote. If you get hurt by yourself and you hurt your leg, how the hell do you get out of it? We're going to talk about that a little bit here in a minute. But again, the point I want to make is just make sure whatever the topic is, you have knowledge on the topic. If you don't and you still want to participate, I give you a week to do homework, just like these guys did. They sat down. They did some homework. I'm just going by real life experience. Yeah. And yeah, that's all really right. all you need, guys. I mean, for the younger generation that's watching us, you need to understand first, foremost, no matter what, stay calm. Stay calm. That's when my wife has a problem. My wife freaks the hell out when things that's turn around. The first thing you got to remember is stay calm in every situation. Even if you're the victim, you have to stay calm because if you don't stay calm, it increases your heart rate. Heart rate increasing increases blood flow. So if you're bleeding, now you have the potential of bleeding out because you won't calm down. Take a breath. Yes, bad things are happening, but they can't get corrected if you're going, oh, my God, who's, 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 I stubbed my toe on a rock. Oh, my God, it's turning purple. Oh, oh what do I do? What do I do? What do, I do? No, you can't do that. You can't do that. I Nowadays, I have a problem with panic attacks, and so uh, I have to be real careful about that when I'm out in the woods. Yeah, I've been getting, like, uh, anxiety attacks lately, like bad exactly. chest pains. Uh, I think I need to figure out what's going on there. So, Take a breath. Ready? Look. Ready? You ever Y'all ever seen the movie Bad Boys? <laughs> with Will Smith and, and, and the other one, Martin Lawrence? Okay. Everybody take a breath. Woosa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if that doesn't work, there's medication. <laughs> Mo, Mo, Mo Homesteading said if uh, you're doing anything about chicken, raising chickens, butchering chickens for meat, uh, she's your guy. Oh, we can talk, Mo. We can talk. Infantry wants, I want to start, okay? I want four chickens. I want one for mommy, one for daddy, I one for the boys. I want eggs. Rhode Island Reds. I want eggs. I want to do it. I just have to see if they'll let she me do it. Meat meat I chicken. had chickens until my wife gave them away. Mo, you want to send me some chicken? I'll take you either extra crispy or original recipe. I'm gravy, bro. You can send it in. I love you to death. You send some home fried chicken to the house. One day ship delivery. We got you. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we'll be like tonight. You got to send it to all the guests, though. We got to have Boons and and Kyle and me oh. all chicken on this Friday night, so we I'll can go the the live stream. Is brought to you by Mo Homesteading. I'll make the chicken fried rice, the best chicken on the internet. <laughs> I'm telling you, and all three of us are eating it, y'all. And chocolate chip cookies, yeah, <laughs> with some milk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a chocoholic. I like my chocolate. Uh yeah, I'm a chocoholic too. I am. I gotta say that. They're doing egg layers. That's easy. And also to remember, uh, in first aid oh. kits. Okay. If you take medications at all, make sure you have what you need plus a little bit extra. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Just in agreed. case you lose or something if happens. You have kids, uh, if you have kids too, not just you, because it's not yeah. just you in this world. If you're yeah. like most of us and you got kids, my son has medication for ADHD. Um, you need to make sure that you have, I would say, comfortably a week supply in the kit. If you want to do more and you're able to get your pharmacist to give you more, or find, you know, one day put one pill away, one month put another pill away, and and squirrel away a nest egg um, is another way to do it. Because I know some medications, they're tight as, tight as balls on them things. They ain't giving you one pill extra. It don't no. work. No. So you got to find a way to at least, I would say, have a seven-day, one-week supply in case of emergency for your medicine and your children's. And don't forget the service animals in the world that y'all don't even know are servicing you. If they need medicine, do well, damn it. Put seven days water medicine in the, in the kit too for the dog, because the dog is going to be right there with you. And that dog may save your life. So very good point. 
Very, very, very good point. Any antibiotics too? That's probably one one good thing to stop uh, infection. Or if you're really getting hurt and it takes a week to get out, you're not getting gangrene. Yep. yep. You know, and so. if if you guys get, I, I I don't know if we're gonna get in trouble for this, but if you get medicate, if you get prescribed antibiotics and you don't use them all, put them away. Hold on to them for a rainy day. They don't go bad um, for a long time. So I don't know if we're allowed to say that, but in a prepper situation, you got to do what you got to do. Here's another fun fact, family. You can go to the pet supply store and go to the aquarium section and you can get antibiotics. You can get, you can go to the feed store. Believe it or not, you're a boy infantry. When I get a sore muscle, I don't use Bengay. I don't use Icy Hot. I use crap they put on racehorses. It's called, what is it called? Veterinarian. What the hell is the name of it? I'm going to tell you guys. I'm going to show you the bottle if you think I'm playing. I think I, I need some. I swear <laughs> to you, dude. I swear to you. If I they have in your, boom, listen to me, brother. It, you, it's a gel. Um, liniment. Liniment gel. Veterinarian liniment gel. Veterinarian's liniment gel. I got this at the damn can, store. Here you go. I'm going to put it up on the I screen. Can get some. Listen to me. If not, I can send it to you. I'm sure I can. No, no, uh, you. My my buddy's a horse farrier, so there you go. Then what you're gonna ask your farrier is about. Let me. Oh, that's actually not too bad. That I'm holding. Can you guys read that? Let yep. jump. Okay. Right. Yeah. This is what I use as icy hot. This is what I use as Ben Gay. If I got a sore muscle, the wife is rubbing this in, and then a half hour later she's doing another coat, and then an hour later she's doing another coat. By that, I'm I'm great. This stuff. I actually like the smell of this versus Bengay or Icy Hot or whatever. Um, it has like a spearmint smell to it, like Wrigley spearmint gum. If you guys have a palate for that kind of stuff, it has a decent smell. Now, it does have um, something in it that is like, like an abrasive, like little grit. Like, you know, when you buy this stuff to clean the motor oil off your hands, it's gritty. It's kind of like that, but that loosens up the skin and allows the gel to get in where it needs to get in where other products can't do. Not that I'm promoting products. I'm not doing that. I'm not sponsored. None of that. This is first aid. So if you, yeah, the first aid for horses. So preppers and people, <laughs> y'all laugh, man. Y'all laugh. But let me tell you something. If you go buy horse antibiotics and the horse pill is this freaking big and you only take a quarter of that pill. Now you have three more times that you can use the dosage of that pill, of that same pill, which is the same crap they give us, just in a larger dose. You know, same thing with fish. Fish get antibiotics. They have antibiotics for fish. You just take a heavier dose. You look up and you learn what dosage is right for your body weight. Write it down, and then you have that knowledge in your first aid kit. For my preppers out there, this is what they do, at least especially down here in South Carolina. Make sure you wash your hands if you use Ben Gay before you go to the bathroom. Hey, let me yeah, tell you. That, I learned yeah. that uh, in high school when I played rugby. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 that was learned back in the high school locker room. You really want to screw with somebody, put some Ben Gay in his, in his underwear and don't tell him. Or in his we job. did that in cross country. We, <laughs> we had a guy that we didn't like, and we put Ben Gay in his underwear when he was taking a shower. He led up for the race, and he ran his fastest race ever. <laughs> Straight to the locker room. <laughs> exactly. He never even stopped at the finish line. He just kept oh, going. Hell no. <laughs> now, I don't want to sound old or nothing, fellas, but y'all remember itching powder? Oh. oh. Y'all remember itching powder? Yeah, I've used that plenty of times in my lifetime in jock straps, in girls' G-strings. I oh. have used in sinister ways when I was a teenager. If you got me in the wrong mood, hey, I found a way to prank you. This is before all these stupid pranksters on YouTube making millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, no, I was doing it back then because who would suspect a blind guy? Think about yep. it, guys. Who's going to Nobody. Yeah. Itching powder in the underwear. Hmm. <laughs> that's, that's just wrong. You know, that's it is. Worse. That's when you bring game. out that, that, that bug you cream. Yeah, no, you better break out the antibiotic, the bug cream, the poison ivy cream, uh, the everything <laughs> cream. God, some one of them when they're in that sensitive area, you do whatever you can. 
I'm burning. It's on fire. There's smoke coming out of my panties. Holy crap. No. <laughs> That, yeah, don't add super glue to it because then you're just going to start a fire. <laughs> Something else to add to your medical kit is either a safety pin or a Sharpie. Um, safety pin or pen? No, pen. a safety pin. Writing a pen. Yeah, yeah. A writing pen. Um, say I can write on my arm with this. Okay, right. A pen. He wants to, yeah, yeah. yeah. A writing a pen. pen. Writing and implement on, that is liquid. On this side, it's uh, more of a magic marker thing. This okay. one is actually made for uh, medical uses. The reason I'm saying that is if you ever had to put a tourniquet on or you had to do, like in the military, if you do a tourniquet, you mm -hmm. write across their forehead what time you write a T and then what time and you started a tourniquet it. was uh, attached. Yep. yep. And then not, not only for a tourniquet, you believe it or not, for anything. Um, if the person stopped breathing, you can write on their damn chest exactly. whatever. Stop breathing at you know 242 PM. If, if they happen to know what uh, blood type they are before they pass out or something. Right. Write it on their forehead. You can give and them the, who's somebody's phone number when they get to write the it. Who do I reach out always, to? Always write it on their forehead right here. Whatever you do, whatever you have for the information, write it across the forehead because that's the easiest place for them to see it. If they put a blanket up over then you can't see their see chest it. or anything. Okay. Very, very good point there. Very good point. Something I wouldn't have thought. Now the pen, the marker, yes, I I would have thought of that um, <clears throat> for tourniquets. And like I said, write damn notes across his forehead. He was a dumbass, tripped and fell <laughs> at this time. Okay? Remember your first <laughs> aid. <laughs> I started first aid. Now you know if they got a big forehead, you could write a paragraph. Um, <laughs> but Mine again, goes all the way out. Yeah, see, <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of laughing earlier. All three of us. <laughs> yeah, we all, we're all bald. So. <laughs> but we got our face covered down here. <laughs> we're all embracing the baldness around here. Um, and we don't have good beard going. What's Say that again? Bass and Binks just joined the stream says, saying what's up. Binks, what's up, brother? Happy Friday. Producer, we're going to need another one here. Cheers. Drink break, everybody. We've been talking for a minute. Let's go. coffee, so. Did, oh, you're out of coffee. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Oh, no. Got to have another one. Got to keep the caffeine going. My, so, my producer went to bed. No worries. Bro. No worries. I, I understand that. Now, this is the one night, you know, and you guys have heard me talk about my media rep, okay? And my media rep, tonight's broadcast is always, as my broadcasts have been for a long time, is by Social uh, Silver Connections Group, okay? And... She call, We talk throughout the week, and when numbers go up, I call her because I want her to see. And when numbers go down, she calls me and goes, what the hell are you doing? Um, but we've known each other for years. She's the lady that put my website together. We were talking, and she's like, you know, infantry, um, I didn't want to say anything, but, you know, you're drinking on Fridays. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I am. This is the one night a week I look forward to. This is the one night a week I have. No more than four beers. I can assure you guys of that because as a DJ of 20 plus years, 20 plus, you realize you got to make it till five, six in the morning, no matter what. So you can't go getting schnookered and going, hey, yeah, have big burns. We, 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 we got to talk about the band aid. Remember that? You can't do that. You got to be professional. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can enjoy this. Yes, I have the freedoms to do what I'm doing. And the great well, people. I Hunting and J&J &J just joined the stream. So oh, we got to do it. I'm glad I got a fresh one. Hunting with J&J. &J. Cheers. Happy Friday. Thank you for stopping in, family. We appreciate you. And tonight we are talking about first aid. First aid in the home. First aid in the car. First aid in the bathroom. First aid wherever. We've covered a lot tonight. We showed you a first aid kit. We took it apart. We showed you the bandages. We showed you the ointments, the creams. 
the variations between a small Walmart. Uh, we talked about a pen and a marker so that you can write on people's foreheads for being dumbasses and getting hurt. Um, you know, I'm joking, but I'm recapping in a joking manner. So you kind of, if you guys yeah, want to, right, yeah, yeah, you're going to have to watch the replay. If you want to find out really what we talked about. And the one thing that I do have to say, guys, thank you very much to my guests uh, because we do get replays on these live streams, and I'm very proud of that to actually see. Well, I would I, think I shared, I shared them out last weekend. So. We've gotten a lot of views, and I, I got to thank you for that. And um, I do have to tell you guys in the live stream that you will be getting your catfish video. We will be going out to eating catfish to all 100 and I think we're at 104, 105 thumbs up. So thank you to every one of those thumbs up. Thank you to Trapper J. Thank you to the folks that shared me out. Um, the kids and I are excited. The kids, not so much as dad. <laughs> but we're going to go get you guys your catfish. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And 100 thumbs up on that video. I'm pushing you guys on other videos too. So don't just stick to that one video. If you see me saying we need 100 thumbs up to get somewhere and you really want to see me getting a – the more we get it, the more I'm going to put myself out there, to be honest with you guys. Um, solo overnighters in the woods. How much better does it get to see a blind guy go solo overnight in the woods? You know, we, we can go other ways, too. So I just want to see that the support is there. I know that it's there. And from my kids, thank you, guys. Thank you. You made you 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 guys blew their world away by giving them over 100 thumbs up. So thank you for me and mom. We really appreciate it. The kids are stoked. That video is coming soon. I don't know if it's next Friday. I don't know if it's Friday after that, but it's coming. <laughs> Something else I thought about uh, when we were taking a drink this last time. Mm -hmm. A bottle of alcohol is something good to put in your medical kit also. Very good point. Uh, Very good. Alcohol actual... drinking. No. Well, we are drinking alcohol. alcohol, but also drinking alcohol. Right. Uh, but now you, the drinking alcohol you, does have to be over a certain proof now so that we, we clarify that. You can't just go get a, a bottle of brandy. No, that, um, uh, ever, you want ever clear. The, you want the, the grain, grain alcohol. Yeah, you grain alcohol. Damn shit. <laughs> yeah, no. Hey, listen, I, I was with the Jamaican community for 20 years, okay? they, they are. Uh, if you get overproof Ray and Nephew Jamaican white rum, that'll kill, that'll kill cancer. <laughs> if you, you mix you mix Ray and Nephew overproof white rum, which smells like freaking gasoline. I have a bottle of it, okay? If you mix that with honey and lime, a Jamaican will tell you you'll cure cancer. And I believe it because no matter what sickness you have, you drink that, the next day you're back. Hey guys, how's it going? Jungle <laughs> juice will make cancer. What is it? Jungle juice. Jungle juice. <laughs> that that's right. that, that's Air, another video. In the military, uh, when I was on an aircraft carrier, we would uh, get uh, jet fuel, mix it with uh, Kool Aid, a few okay. other low ingredients that I I won't explain, so nobody can do it. You know, some coyote. Now we know. Now we <laughs> know what happened to the coyote. We understand. <laughs> right, booms. I mean, what what are we? Whoa. Oh, that's like making moonshine out of radiators. You're gonna kill somebody. You can't do that. Jungle buddy. juice. <laughs> Jungle juice. Man. Flat iron uh, cider. Flat iron cider. And it's listen, as, as a person, iron. as a person that has made plenty of my own homebrew uh, moonshine, you got to make sure that the proof. Understand the word proof mm -hmm. translates into 50% of the content just by saying the word proof. So if it says it's 50 proof, it's 25% alcohol. If it's a hundred proof, it's 50% alcohol. We're looking for 150 proof or higher. If you get into 180 proof, you're turning alcohol into ethanol. Ethanol is what you drive your car on. You guys understand that? Um, E85, ethyl 85, for those folks like me that have a flex fuel vehicle. That's that's the, the grain grain alcohol, like ever. 
a flex fuel vehicle is run, and are you ready for this, guys? I'm not going to bullshit you. Is run on moonshine. Uh -huh. It is 180 or higher moonshine. When you go to an E85 pump and you put it in your tank, it smells like mash. It smells like moonshine. So, again, my preppers, listen to what I'm codedly saying to you to break down the algorithm that is the horrid monster of YouTube. It's you can drive your damn car on corn, sugar, and water. You could save someone's life with the alcohol produced from this as long as it's 150 or higher. 150 or higher translates into 75% alcohol per 100. Okay, guys? Brandy ain't gonna cut it. Bourbon ain't gonna cut it. Uh, what you got up there, Boons? What you got under the under 150? I know you got a bunch of Rome ain't gonna cut regular Captain Morgan. No, he ain't gonna help you. He gonna get you drunk, but he's not gonna cure you. Bacardi's 151. Now Bacardi 151. That's it right there. Uh, vodkas aren't gonna work because vodkas generally are under 150. Vodkas when you get them high because they're made of potato or made from starch. When they start to get to a certain height in in alcohol content, they don't taste good. It's like a, I'm going through a moonshine class here. Yeah, yeah we. When yeah, I used we, to drink, I, I was a jack man. Right, guys, drop it in the comments below. The producers writing it down. What do you want the topics to be? Infantry is a is a book. I'm an encyclopedia of crap. Um, yes, I could do a, a topic for prepper use only. Uh, I could Prep, teach you prepping stills. <laughs> hey, hey, I could tell you, bro. I could tell you. I started with two five gallon buckets and I moved up to a 25 gallon still. So I have the knowledge. I have, uh, what would you say, their producer, at least eight years of knowledge in, the, in that area on what makes what, how to make it. Uh, how to build a still, how to do everything. If you, so, yeah, we could do an episode on that. I was doing moonshiners before that damn TV show came out and ruined it for everybody. So, I, you know, that was when I was doing it. And I set out to do it, believe it or not, to make, make rum. I love rum, guys. I love rum. I love old rum. I don't like white rum. I don't like tannic rum. I don't even like piss colored rum. I like dark, like 10 year. Age in a barrel, nobody's seen daylight. 12 year age where you could just put it on some rocks and go like this. I'm mm. with Mo, and if I am gonna drink, it's gotta be something vodka. I'm a vodka guy. If I do drink, if I honestly, Boons, if I were to give you my one of my batches, yeah, I could give you the white, I could give you the apple pie, which is traditionally what? made in my household, I could give you cotton candy or cotton candy. We did. We did, uh, for Christmas, I did candy canes. Uh, we did Jolly Rancher. This is all flavors that were created long before what you've seen on the shelf. Long before what you've seen on the shelf, okay? Uh, I even did one out of, out of remember the fireballs when you are a kid? Oh, the, 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 the fireballs. Those those things. Things. Yeah. Before the product hit the market called Fireball, I sold Fireball made out of fireball candies, corn. It was amazing. It was amazing. I made mango brandy. Somebody dropped the shopping cart in Florida. You know, in Florida, we got mangoes. Somebody showed up and just dropped the shopping cart full of mangoes on my front porch. No note, no phone number. I'm like, I know what I'm going to do with this. Put it in the mash tun and let this sucker turn into wine. And once it turns into wine, I can mix it up and make brandy. Oh, it was, yeah. I'm going to get myself incriminated on this channel. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, yeah, more knowledge for you preppers out there. If you preppers want to learn how to take care of yourself in the event of an apocalypse, I can teach you how to do that. <laughs> Guests, over to you. <laughs> uh, and the crowd goes quiet. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to read. I'm sorry, my chest started hurting. That. Take take breezy, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. It's like you're out of breath, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I it's, got some too. 
I don't well, know my why blood you... pressure earlier today was 159 over 87, but I just been having trouble breathing, and then all of a sudden my chest starts hurting. Hey, if you need to take a breather for a minute here, um, I believe she can click hit you off for now, and you want to come back on. You got the link, so if you need to take a break, please do that. I don't want yeah, you like, know. I'm good. Mo like I'm Mo good. just said, maybe taking aspirin might help. Yeah. Hey guys, first aid. What do we do for brother right here? Come on now, everybody. Jump in the damn comments. Mo so, yeah, Mo it's has. The, but you know, no, Mo has the idea. I just want to see if anybody else would diagnose or think we have a situation here. Let's. I, I don't mean to do this to you, Coyote, but it kind of fell oh, into no place. Problem. So, yeah. if you need to, take a good idea. idea. Yeah, no, you need to. It's like if you need to take a break, let us know. You can always come back on, dude. You know, please don't make yourself hurt, sick, or anything. I'm, uh, you know, for YouTube, it's not worth it. We want you that, here. We don't, we don't want the memory of you here. Well, that's part of my problem is being in the military for so long. I just push through it and keep going. <laughs> I, I'm the same way. My wife is the one that she, she'll tell you uh, religiously. She's the one that actually points out I got hurt. I don't pay it to. I, I'll be bleeding and won't know it. <laughs> So I'm one of them pushing through, you know, adapt, improvise, overcome, brother. That's what we're, yeah, you're, you I'm know, saying. I may not be military, but I live by that code. And if you do live by that code, you sick, dead or dying, you get work done. Uh, I've sure had the blood, high blood pressure problems for almost a year now, but it, the last month and a half, it's just really getting bad. Let me see who in the comments, uh, because you never know. I'm a big, like I said with the Jamaicans, I'm a big holistic person. I don't like medicine. I don't believe in modern medicine. I think bad things of the modern medical world because they're not, it, it's not you. It's the pharmacy company telling the doctor to give this to you. Um, if anyone, excuse me, it goes, whoa. If anybody in the chat, he says he has high blood pressure. OK, if you have a natural way to remedy and my wife's getting ahead of me again, if um, if you have a natural way to level out blood pressure without side effects, that's the and this is the reason I don't go to the doctor is that a list when I don't know if you guys you guys are you, see, you you been around a while like me when the word death becomes a side effect, I'm good. When did death become a side effect? It's not a side effect. That's the end. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So why now? Yeah, they don't. They don't tell you because the guy on my side of the commercial reads it as this: possible side effects are going to be you will die, you will crap your brains out, your head's going to explode, your ears are going to incave, your eyes are going to go all the way through your rectum, you're going to vomit. Now you hear that? What you hear on the commercial is side. <laughs> That's what you the, get on TV. The doctor sent me some stuff. Uh, I don't know if y'all will see it. No, nah, it's just really small. Take one for high. In the, in the okay, yellow right high. there. Make sure you cover your personal info. Hey, hey, hey. Cover your personal. Okay. I can't, I, I can't see because you're this big on my screen. I'm just putting yeah. it out. Cover your personal info. Um, well, I was covering my info. I just was showing the name of the medication. Okay, but it's probably 10 all, pages long. All, all this stuff has done is actually raised my blood pressure and leveled it at a higher level than I got before. You. But before I was just doing a big up and down, but now I'm just peaked up here at the top and staying there. I have something for you, Coyote, when we get off the stream, because I know you're, you're hours behind me. I'm going to give you a website. And you're going to go and you're going to check it out. If you don't buy anything, I 150 million percent understand. But I'm going to give you the head of this place's phone number. So when you call, you can say DJ Infantry told me I need to talk to you. I have a product that will level your blood sugar. That will level, I'm sorry, your blood pressure. I have products for blood sugar. I have products for high blood pressure, high cholesterol. If you have vision products like me, folks, I know a product. I don't, they're not a sponsor with me anymore, but I've worked with the guy since the beginning of this, this company. 
Um, I've used the products. You guys can go on my page and see them. There's the I can if you have bad eyesight. There is products for high blood pressure, high cholesterol. If you have di sugar diabetes, not a, whether you're phase one or phase two in sugar diabetes, we have a way, there's herbal ways to level and to neutralize the things without medication. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying this person is a doctor. I'm saying my experience over years of working with this person, the products work. The products I've taken work. I like my herbal medication too. And th this is a hundred percent herbal. There is no medicine involved at all in what I'm telling you. Here's listen, here's the, the website. Okay. It's grantherbalproducts.com. You're going to have to text that to me because I won't remember it. Hey, I, I got you. Uh, matter of fact, producer, why don't you drop a link in the oh she don't know how to drop Grant a link. Herbalproducts.com. It's not Grant oh. Herbalproducts.com. But I don't want you to go to the website. Boons. Brother, you're gonna call, you're gonna get a hold of me. I'm gonna give you the owner's phone number. I'm gonna send you straight to the owner of the business, and you're gonna tell them infantry sent me all the way from North Florida, and I live in Canada just to come and see what you're talking about. But look at the website. Look at what's up. The products work. And a med I'm not a doctor. I don't medically induce crap on this channel. Um, but they work. I've taken the ICAN medication. The ICAN medication helps with glaucoma. It helps with pressures in the eye. It helps with stigmatism. It helps with many, many, many problems that eye issues cause. If your eye twitches, it'll slow it down. If you are like me, uh, it does have uh, cannabis in it. So it is a cannabis product. And if anybody knows anything in the world about cannabis and blind people, why the hell every blind person with eye issues doesn't have it, I don't understand. But that's a whole other topic for another night. This product, the eye can works. I have taken the blood pressure one just to see for the hell of it. It calms me down, which so that would tell me my blood pressure went down. If it calmed me, a normal person down, and you have issues, it's going to work for you. It's 100% herbal. There's no chemicals added. Check it out for yourself. That's all I'm going to say. GrantHerbalProducts.com. Coyote, I'm going to give you Dr. Grant's phone number. Okay? I want you to link to him. I want to get you this product somehow, some way, if I have to buy it and send it to you myself. It, it's going to help you, dude. I, I, you know, you're my buddy and seeing that right there, we got to get you fixed, man, or at least feeling better. Uh, I just keep going and going. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Keep going and going. That's what kills people. I, I've heard? been dead three you times. God you keeps telling me to get back down there and get to work, so. You ever heard that term, I'll sleep when I'm dead? I'm a person that used to say that all the time, working night shift. I ain't worried about it. I'll just sleep when I'm dead. Why well, do something to tomorrow when I can do it today? That was my uncle's dying uh, motto when he had his throat cancer. He lived that way for 10 years and a rough way to live because no saliva glands. He was fed by a tube, you know, so. Let me tell you guys. Military and we were trained, you can rest when you're dead. Get your ass right. moved. Right now, let me tell you. Let me tell you, as a person of of sixteen years working midnight till eight a.m. night shift, a shift no man, God did not create any man to be awake at midnight to eight a.m. for twenty damn years. Okay, to the point where my doctor friends were saying, "Dude, if you don't get off night shift soon, you're going to cause damage to yourself." My cousin went through the same thing because he he went through like twenty years of working night shift. Uh -huh. And even afterwards, it took him maybe five years just to get a, adjusted to the normal daytime routine. I'm still not. And I've been off night shift. October will be a year that I've lost my job at the radio station. Um, I volunteered to do security. Uh, I was doing it seven days a week, and then we got another security guard. So I went to five nights, and now I'm down to three nights. Well, let me tell you guys, this. I've got everybody topped at 20 years overnights. That's at the radio station. That's not counting my DJ career that starts at 10 p.m. You get done at the club at 4 a.m. By the time you get home, it's 9 a.m. because you want to have breakfast. You're still wired from, whoa, what a night in the club. You got to get that hangover washed over. I have been awake when you're not supposed to be awake more than anybody ever should. Here's the Facts. 
the term. Don't worry about it. I'll sleep when I'm dead. There's plenty of time for that. Okay, great. You're going to be dead because you don't sleep. Your sleep is more important in your life than any other task you set before you. A person who does not sleep cannot think, cannot operate. If you look at your body as a machine and you drain your battery till zero, where the heck do you think you're going to go? This does all go with a first aid, by the way. So if you're a person that does not sleep, your body will eventually catch up. I'm telling you as a person of 20 plus years overnights, I still can't sleep right. I'm still up one, two in the morning. Ask my wife every night of the week because I can't get into that swing of being normal. You've done it for so long. How did you use the routine? It's a routine. It's in your life routine for right. half your life. Half, yeah. 20 years, dude. There's I've I have been awake overnights more than some of the viewers have been alive. That's a fact. Some of the viewers aren't even 20 years old. My problem I, is I'm, I'm I know because my analytics tells me so. Okay. <laughs> I know because Google Analytics tells me so. I have under 20 year old viewers. I might be an old fart, but I got kids watching. I have been awake more than you've been alive. And when you're on night shift, coyote, am I right? You get off at eight, but guess what? I can't just go home and go to bed. I got to go to the bank. Then I have a dentist appointment. These places are only open between nine and five when you're supposed to be asleep. So now gotta you go check traps. Yeah, exactly. I got to set traps. I got to go to the grocery store. The dog needs food. Uh, my wife is pissing him on. I got to take her shopping. Whatever life comes into play that you are not going to bed when you get home, you're going to maybe get, I was averaging four hours of sleep for 20 years. CP gets two to three hours. Put that comment up there. Put Drop that comment for me. CP gets two to three hours. I averaged four. Now I went to bed. Thank God I train myself to when I'm at home and I go to bed, I went to bed. And within 20 minutes of being home, I was asleep. That is what gave me my four-hour average. Otherwise, I'd be like CP, and I'd be in the damn three-hour range. You can't do but it. When you sleep, do you sleep the whole four hours? Yeah, no. You because can my, Hurricanes have come through, and I slept right through it. Bombs have come through. I, I, go, I can't hear nothing. When I'm down, no matter whether it's an hour or five or eight, I am down. You are not bothering me. My, my kids waking. were born, and uh, they had a hard time. Well, when my daughter was born, they had a hard time waking me up. Wow. Yeah. And they, they were asking my wife, why well, why can't we wake him up? We're trying to wake him up. Well, you got to touch him. He's deaf. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, don't touch that me when I'm asleep. That's, <laughs> depending on your disability will depend on how you sleep. Because, we, we yeah. you know, I didn't even go into that. Like, my wife. I remember when we were dating, this goes way back like Cracker Jack. Um, she got up and she tried to give me a kiss on my blind side while I was sleeping. And I'm not saying this is cool or anything, guys, but I hit her so freaking hard that she flew across the room, off the bed, onto the floor, and was looking at me like I was still asleep, dead asleep. Even after this, she had to wake me up and go, what the hell did you hit me for? I go, what do you mean I hit you? I didn't hit you. What are you talking about? I right. floored her across the room because she did on the disability side. Now she knows I'm a, you don't do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm a combat veteran, and uh, my I've knocked my wife a few times and on accident. Right. I'm sound asleep. Yeah, and you come and touch me when I'm asleep, and I'm just like, <laughs> "What's up?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the military, I hit a uh, lieutenant, and then I hit a chief, and I went to captain's mask for uh, basically court martial for both of them, and uh, the captains asked me, "So, uh, what happened there, Petty Officer?" Right, Cap? I really don't know. I was sound asleep. And all of a sudden, I heard, oh, damn, he got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> and I looked out, and lieutenant's laying on his back right beside my bed. <laughs> well, uh, guess what? 
you're not responsible for the first 45 seconds of waking up. So he case tried to wake you up. Yeah, he tried to wake you up. Yeah. Hey, listen, no, there, there, there's facts and cases all over the country of if you met, mess with someone while they're sleeping, you pretty much get what you deserve. And I, I, yeah, I tell this yep. to my wife. I tell this to my kids. Did you come? Quick question. You come from a, a big family of brothers and sisters? No. No, no, no. When, for do. me growing up, yeah. I came up with my, my, dad, my dad was the same thing. And he says it's because they're growing up with all, you know, the little brats of the family bugging them. He'd wake up, you know, like I'd wake him up having bad dreams when I was little there. And he'd wake up with a fist, you know, like right, ready well, to go. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. Okay. I'm weird. <laughs> and when I say weird, <laughs> you're, you're going to get this. Okay. If it's noisy and there's a, a category four hurricane outside, I'm dead asleep. Dead asleep. I won't hear the tree hit the damn building. My wife will attest. I slept through Hurricane Andrew. I went out. I played in Hurricane Andrew, which was a category five, hit Miami, down where I was living. I went and I played and I walked and I leaned and had my fun. And I went inside and I went to sleep. When I was done, it was nothing but devastation afterwards. But when I was working at the radio station and I'd nod off the minute things go quiet, I'm instantly awake instant, like standing up. Like if you just electrocuted me because I, it's not normal for it to be quiet. I can't do the quiet. My, my right ear has the, the buzz. Like, okay. Well, I've, I've got uh the, the ringing. What the hell do they yeah. call that? The, um, there's a tech that I forget what it's called, but Oh my God, it doesn't yeah, go away. Right. And it's, it's yeah. 10 times worse when I'm trying to fall asleep. Yeah. I'm sure. Intermittently. For me, imagine, imagine, I forget, ten, tenonitis. Tenonitis. Yeah. Tenonitis. I have tenonitis in my left ear, which sucks because that's in the blind side of me. <laughs> All I hear is, when it's quiet. Constant. Constant in that ear. Now, as a DJ, ironically, this is the ear I listen to the outside world. This was the ear I listen to what's on the turntable. That's the ear that rings. But that was the ear I, <laughs> that did the most work because when it's in here and you guys are talking and I can hear myself through the cans right now, I don't hear that beep, but the minute it goes quiet, I hear that. But sleeping, it doesn't affect me, though. If I'm sleeping in the woods and it's perfectly quiet, I'm dead sleeping great. The, the other thing is, once I had kids, certain noises <laughs> trick me. Yeah. It's weird. It's kind of yeah. like, Coyote, the way you could relate to it is being in the military. Certain noises trigger you. Certain noises instantly make you stand up, grab that gun, round ready, safety's off, and you're going to kill whatever's at the end of that barrel. Somebody starts talking when I'm sleeping. It doesn't bother me one bit. But you a, know what I mean? a banging but or a like, boom, somebody knocking on the door. Yeah. I'm up like, what the? <laughs> 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 but my problem is I've got like I've got a knee injury. I uh, I had my leg brought all the way up to my butt. And uh, what did you do? Kick now yourself had a, or what? What happened there? <laughs> Prisoner of war kicked me. Oh, Lord. Uh, I meant it to be a went somewhere else with it, Kyle. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were in an kicking contest, and here you are talking about POW camp, man. You just trump me every time. <laughs> but uh, now I've got eight herniated discs. I've got nerve damage in both shoulders. And so about every 15, 20 minutes, I wake up to roll over or move or because I yeah. start getting lead, uh, restless leg syndrome, I think yep. is what they call it. Yep. I'm starting to get that. Yeah. But what's uh, bad yep. is it's not just in my leg. It's my, like my whole left side. It feels like I got ants just crawling over me, and I just I start sitting here, and I'm just like, oh. you know what it is? I'm going to tell you what that is. That, that ants crawling down the one leg thing. That's called sciatica, my friend. Do you carry your wallet in your butt cheek? Not anymore. Okay. I have cargo pants and I put them there. But my problem is, go ahead. I carry 
I carry this on my back. <laughs> no, 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 no. I carry this on my front. Listen, you're this big and I can see that. No, no. I okay. carry this on my uh, no, side. No, no, This no. isn't the new toy. Yeah, no. Hey, did you, did you like my comment about that? Are you going to do a video for me or what? Did you read my comment about that new AR, that new nine pistol you got? Yeah, this one. This is my new yeah, brand yeah. new AR pistol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a picture on yeah, on Instagram, and I'm not going to tell you what's in the picture because I want you to go see it. Um, he has a picture of that that right there in a military helmet, and I told him I want you to take that pistol, shoot that damn helmet, and I want to see if the round goes through. Whether you do it or not, I don't know, but I would be curious to see if there were a nine millimeter will go through a ballistics helmet. This isn't a helmet. That wasn't a helmet. No, it's my Trump hat. I thought it was a damn military he, helmet with Trump. I don't care about Trump. I just I thought it was a. This, a, a this is my helmet. Trump hat. Oh well. <laughs> That's my brand new Trump hat. I thought it was a ballistics helmet with Trump on it or something. I wanted you to shoot the damn helmet to see if the round went through it. I mean, you can shoot Trump if you want, but you support him. But I just wanted to know. I thought it was a ballistics helmet. My bad. See, we're I, the blind. I helmet. wish somebody would send me something like that to shoot. I, I would love to do some demo ranch type yeah. videos. <laughs> How many helmets does it take to stop a 50 cal? Hey, listen. I, I, found, I found demo ranch because of his, uh, his younger brother that passed away. Yeah, that, a lot of people that was did. sad. Yeah, a lot I was, of I was subscribed because my uh, my channels have a like half building channel, so I was subscribed to him for a, for a while there before he he ran into his issues, you know. So I love Demo Ranch. I fell in love with him because I, you know, blind or not, I'm a gun guy. I like guns. I like ammo, ammo, and you know, military stuff. I'll never get to see or touch because my disability says I can't. Um, which I don't is like that at all. <laughs> QT oh, says that hat is toilet paper. Nobody, yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, all I'm going to say about your boy, okay? Hey, this is my one dispute, and I'm going to leave it at this, and nobody gets to comment past this because there's no politics in here because that starts fights. This is seriously a funny real life kind of joke. Take it jokingly, okay, Coyote? Yeah. Your boy is so damn good. Where's my second stimulus check? And how the hell do you have a nerve? To let these people take a five week vacation when I ain't got no money. Shh, tell them bastards when you give me my money, they can take a vacation. That's my problem with your boy right now. Okay. He my needs to up and better. say, no, the people come first. Your vacation comes whenever. Because I don't get, do you get five weeks vacation, Kyle? I don't get five week vacation. I'm you on boons. permanent vacation. You're, boons, you're, on, you're Canadian, bro. Y'all people come here six months out of the year. You get five weeks vacation? No, I'm on permanent vacation. I'm disabled, retired. Oh well, yeah, no, you got this. See, you keep coming in with, with this card, man. You keep beating me. You're trumping me in my own broadcast. <laughs> Trump, man, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, the man, in my opinion, and I, like I said, I'll leave it at that. Is he should have never let anybody leave for any kind of vacation when his people are suffering and waiting for promises that were made months ago. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. That was the Democrats. It's, that it's that. like that so, everywhere. No, like I know. And, and I do. That's, that's why I, say, I, I want. I want to leave it at, at that because I do not ever want politics to come into any of my stuff because everyone is entitled to their own beliefs. I vote for, believe it or not, I'm going to vote for damn probably SpongeBob and Patrick again because I don't care for either one of them. I vote for the people. I vote for the person that's going to do me the best good, and I don't see that right now. I didn't see but it last election. But did you see how much Trump has improved the care for veterans? He's improved the care and the ability for black you people. Heard, you heard Kyle, because I do want to stop you. I really don't want to go into politics. Like I said, I said my only objection with the man at this time, in this present place of life, is I was promised money just like you. I'm handicapped, just like you. My disability check has been gone 10 times over waiting for promises, while these people that make 10 times what we make in disability, 20 times in disability, get to take a five-week vacation. I'm, not, well, I'm in the same situation wait. where I, I didn't oh. get anything, anything oh. extra because we're not the working class. Yeah. See? So, again, you have your people are suffering. 
when you're doing nothing. You let them take a vacation. Now, let's leave it at that. Let's go back to first aid. Yeah, everybody can agree to that. <laughs> we're about right? to have real first aid. <laughs> everybody can wear your mask. Yeah, yeah, and then the mask, dude. I called. I called on Walmart the other day. This is horse crap. Walmart, you going to Walmart? Walmart sent a Google wide like everybody on their cell phone got the same message that Walmart must have masks if you're an employee. You must have masks if you're a guest. Then why am I walking in my Walmart at the store and got no masks on and the employees don't either? Over no. here, it's yeah. man mandatory in public, no matter if you're I can't walking wear your dog a mask or... for medical reasons. Well, let me tell you something. This coronavirus thing is so serious, and I have a wife and, and two children that I have to protect that I swear to God I've almost pulled my pistol on somebody and said, get the F out the store now because you are endangering my life, period. But, but see, like, I can't crazy. wear a mask medically. I, I get that, but – but. Coyote, I'm talking about 20 year old. Like everybody else, because this should be a first aid issue anyway. And if YouTube don't like us talking about it, well, then YouTube come up with a cure for the virus. Um, <laughs> you need to protect yourself. And I don't ever dispute how Coyote protects himself. I don't dispute how Boone's protects him and his family. You shouldn't dispute or argue how I protect my family because I'm not going to dispute how you protect your family. I look at it as this. You are endangering my life. By the time I find out I have the problem, it's too late for my family. Okay? Just same reason my kid is not in school right now. Well, I'm going to wait until the festering um, Petri dish that our children start to fester and see what happens. If the school is clean and clear in a, in, in a month, then I'll put my kid in school. But you can't tell me which one of them 10 kids has the disease. And by the time you find out, it's too late because everybody already has it or has been exposed, or has been exposed to it. Tell me how that's fair to anybody else, guys. Tell me. Not On a first that, day the, kid, the kids remember school being a certain way. And this year they're going to be back, going back to a big shock. Yeah. It's going to be totally different. They're all going to be spread out. Even my kids' school, there's no You know recess. what it is to wear a field for eight hours? Well, uh, moms and dads, how do you feel about going to work and sitting like this for eight hours a day? You're talking like you're Bane from Batman, and you can't breathe. And for eight hours, you're creating a Petri dish in front of your face that you're... <laughs> constantly doing now on the other side of that petri dish the world is creating a petri dish that is meeting somewhere in the middle and you better hope you got a good name you see where i'm going with this guys At the end of the day my safety is based upon the world's stupidity at this point all you got to do is follow what they say. And if they're wrong, they're wrong. At least it's not you infecting my family. At least it's not you getting coyote sick or boom good <laughs> sick. Because you didn't do what, sorry. you know. Sorry, Mo, if I missed your message, I didn't see it. Uh, Mo, Mo home settings going to bed if she's still in the chat. Mo, if you're still here, love you a ton. Thank you so much as always. Mwah. I hope you got some later, Mo. tonight. And thank mm -hmm. you for your help, Mo. And if y'all don't know amazing. home setting, go check out Mo home setting. Check out the mods. Check out the guests. Check out each other while you're at it because you might find somebody that you say, Hey, I didn't know this existed. Q QT's going going to bed too. He's saying good night. See you later, QT. I'll be right back. Yeah, you go and come back because I'm next. <laughs> As we know, the live streams, we need a little break. And I was actually talking to Rob, uh, that shiner guy today, about how we can run a little commercial ad so that people can run to the restroom or, or something like that. We're coming up with that guys. As you see, every week is getting better. Now I do want to put out one point, one tip that I learned that I'm applying here. Um, the camera that we're using, you guys all say that it is a good quality, right? Yeah, you agree? I, I like it. It looks good. It's my damn GoPro. Oh, I don't say GoPro. It's my action camera. If you, you know, well, I have. I don't use GoPro. I don't believe in GoPro. I I feel that the word GoPro is an overpriced name for it a is. cheap for a cheap piece of plastic. So I use the Acaso Brave 4K. I pay eighty dollars 
for this camera. If it dumps in the lake, the I really do the not GoPro kill killer. Right. And, and do you guys see the quality? Look at the quality yourselves. It's like beautiful. It's 10 it's shooting in 1080p for a web camera. Now go online, try to find a web camera right now. I dare you. I dare you. And it's today in a day and age, it's on back order. Go look up an action camera. You could get them dime a dozen. So think think of that creators in the chat, people that live stream. Use your yeah, hey, and don't forget a thermosel. Don't forget a thermosel either, guys. But the in here, I gotta get my thermosel out. Hey, let me tell you, at this company, I, I am highly impressed at thermosel. If you guys didn't see the product review on the thermosel, which is the bug video, y'all are sleeping on it. Um not because it's a product. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not endorsed by them. I am a person that went to Walmart. I bought four of them because my baby can't have, when you have a baby, this is first day, guys. Here we go. When the bug repellent that comes in these packages, do not put on your kid. Do not put, I mean, your baby. When they're like toddler, it, you know, you can start trying it out. But when they're a baby, do not put DEET on your kids. Do not put bug spray on your kids it might burn your children okay and be careful about putting deed on plastic things it oh, will melt it. it it'll melt <laughs> it. yeah, man you spray deep wood off on your watch you're not reading your watch no more it's done it'll I melt up a pair of binoculars i i had my binoculars right here on my chest oh and you sprayed and yourself sprayed myself I've had I started picking them up and look, and I realized as the night went, they were just like melting away. Six hundred dollars like glasses melted from freaking bug spray. Six hundred dollars oh. prescription glasses because they're freaking scratch proof plastic. Melted acid, acid and bug spray down there, or might well, be different up yeah, here. I've, I've never heard of that. I, I think every the the deep, deep. Uh, will melt. Melt see, I plastic. use off, off woods, I've never used the deep, so you, they you know we have, off has the deep in it, yeah. All but off think, has deep, but deep woods off has a higher deep content, depending but on I the don't product. Think Canada can have deep. Oh, yeah, that's true. I don't know what you guys are allowed to have up there. I don't think y'all are allowed to have it up there. Uh, I've got a somebody up there that they were saying they couldn't. Use certain sp bug sprays up there because it had certain chemicals. I was, I was yeah. thinking it was deep that you couldn't we, have we up have there. We have the so. off deep. We have the yeah. You got deep woods off. Yeah. yeah then, then you've got like the deep woods off is like other yeah. than buying straight deep in a bottle. Deep woods off has been around since I was in Boy Scouts. So like <laughs> late eighties, early nineties. That has the highest deep content. The deep woods. Then you have yeah. off regular green bottle, but it is an alternative for you guys. Thermocell. Yeah. Okay. Thermocell is an amazing product. And the reason I'm chatting so much about thermocell is not just how good the product works. Each thermocell that you use a handheld unit, they have a lot of products. Uh, each you handheld saw my unit, comment about it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I read everybody's comment. Um, each product gives you 15 feet radius of the device of coverage uh what we used to do was we clip it on the baby buggy we clip it on the playpen we clip it you know somewhere where the baby can't touch it because it does get hot it does heat up you don't want nobody to get burned but you clip it like on the baby buggy you have the baby and then usually baby buggies have an under spot for the carnivals and all the crap you're going to acquire you stick under there we just put it and under there crow. And, and let it come up scarecrow's uh dipping out Scarecrow, my brother, you have a wonderful night. Thank you as always for. Hey, listen, um, shoot me an email with your phone number. I'll call you and, and give you some some pointers on how to help yourself out with that back. It's going to be the heat nice therapy, but I'll go more into it with you depending on where it is. Um, so yeah, drop me that email. I'll call you tomorrow. Um, see first aid. See, I'm 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 taking care of first aid off the clock. I charge hey, house calls. By the way, house calls. I charge double for house calls. Um. <laughs> But yeah, a, instead of using the Thermocell is a great product. Now, if you don't want to go that route, I have another product. But wait, there's more. There's this product called Skin So Soft. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Avon makes it. Remember the old yeah, Avon calling? Mm -hmm. Lady knock on your door? Yeah, Avon. 
they have a product called Skin So Soft. And they have now a wider variety. But what I'm going to tell you to buy is the original oil. Not the lotion, not the body wash. All of those work to a point. But if you want to get rid of bugs and you don't want to do it chemically and you want to do it herbally, it works. The, it works. the active mm -hmm. ingredient that you're looking for is pahoba oil. I don't know how to spell it. I'm not a speller. Pahoba oil is the active ingredient that triggers the mosquitoes not to like you. It's just like citronella oil that we all know we put in our tiki torches. If you grow citronella grass around your yard, you won't have mosquitoes. If you take the citronella leaf and go and rub it all over you, you ain't going to have mosquitoes. But pojoba oil is your other alternative if you don't go bug spray or thermosel. Did you guys agree? Yep. The one thing I have problem with the thermosel, like I said in my comment, is if it's too windy out or you're moving around a lot, like hiking and stuff, it it you got to give it a minute to build up a cloud. Well, if it's windy, here's, here's where I'm going to get you on the windy one, at least in Florida. If it's windy where the thermocell won't work, you won't have that many mosquitoes. You know, when it's a windy day, you're not getting tore up like if it was a stagnant day with no wind. So... Well, like yeah. if you're sitting in a blind outside, it's windy, but in the the blind, it's not that windy, but there's wind kind of blowing through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but see, I don't like keeping the thermosel inside the blind. I try to put it uh, outside the blind. I usually tie it to the top of the uh, blind. Okay. But if it's windy out there, then it doesn't do me any good. I'm going to let y'all chat for a minute. I'm going to take my quick break. So keep going on that. I've used them inside uh, a carport when I was moose hunting a few years back. Because uh, the black flies and the deer flies uh, were just horrendous, you know, in a midday when it starts to get hot out. Yeah. But don't use it in a completely closed in area because... No, there is no floor. There's no, yeah. no floor in it. So I doing security. I I've put mine in the truck every once in a while to kind of get them out of there. And man, it'll fill up with that stuff real quick. And it's it you can just like taste it in your mouth afterwards. Yeah, I never got to that point where I could taste it, but that I know I know they work real good. Oh yeah. I've had this one for almost eight years, uh, and I like it so much, I bought me a second one. How many people we have in here right now? I don't know. I'm only on the, the stream yards front, so I can't, uh, I can't tell. Is there anybody still in the chat? Say hello. What's uh, what's a good topic for next weekend's panel? This is the question that's been coming in and out of the stream as we've been going along. Well, I came up with first aid, so... <laughs> <laughs> So, in my infinite infantry wisdom, I, while going to the bathroom. <laughs> you had an epiphany? I did, believe it or not. <laughs> um, your urine, believe it or not, is not only used to make cold packs, apparently. <laughs> uh, you, you do know your urine, when it comes out of your body, is sterile. Um, back in the day, I don't know if it's still taught to this day, but in my cousin's time, who is my age... When he went through Marine Corps basic training, he was taught that if you peed on your feet, you would never get boot rot because your urine, your urine is sterile. It will also help with uh, toenails. Now, not being gross and all, but I'm sure every one of us pees in a dang shower. OK, men, women in between, whatever you in the shower. We all do our little pee sometimes. We'll pee on your feet. 
and it will eliminate or help to eliminate uh, in the military's case boot rot which you don't ever want to get boot rot or jungle rot or whatever name you want to call it um Very but cool. it also helps with your toenail if you have toenail fungus it'll help to relieve that um you can drink your own pee too yeah okay bear girls i dare you <laughs> <laughs> wait how many likes on the video for a bio I, I, I've pit. done that. I'm not volunteering for that again. No, no, no. Come on, Kyle. How many likes on the video do we got to get for you to come back on and drink your own pee to prove that theory? 2,000. <laughs> 1,000? That's what you said? 2,000. 2, 2, oh, all right. You're stuck at that. Everybody in the chat heard it. 2,000 likes on the video, and my man Kyle is going to demonstrate how to drink his own pee. Look, Justin, I'll even let you sit it. I'll let you sit it Justin down. Justin Porter just joined the stream saying hello, guys. Who's that? Justin Porter. Justin. Hello, Justin Friday, Porter. Brother. Thank you for coming in. It's Good Jen. to have you. It's what? It's Jen. Who's Jen? My dad. Who? Justin? Yes. Justin is Jen. Justin is Jen. Justin is Jen. Okay. So Justin, guys, is Jen. Justin Hi, Jen. was Justin, and Jen was Jen. I don't know, man. But hey, listen, Jen. Um, it's the new age. Oh, okay, 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 okay. You shouldn't do that. That's not, especially in, in this this kind of thing. If you can't make an account, just FYI, uh, get off your son's account and make one for yourself so we're not broadcasting somebody else. Yeah, but I we did do the same thing with my uh, one of my buddies in my stream. He ended up joining, and I was, uh, I kind of felt bad. You know what I mean? I was like, dude, why don't you get uh, your own name? What are you doing using the wife's name? Kind of like bugging well, on me. He's like, oh, this different. Is, I don't this mind. Is my mom's account, and she's now dead. I felt. I don't bad. mind. Well, if they're dead, that's a different scenario. I mean, I don't mind putting my wife on the internet. My wife is half the half of everything. But when it comes to my kids, <laughs> I, I I don't. My son was doing hangouts with a kid today in class, and he dang near got his butt tore up for almost giving the kid our address. You don't, I don't mess around with my kids anything on the online because you know it's dangerous as yeah, parents. You didn't you never know what she just, here. What she it, just said in, is actually true, right? Granted, in yeah. here, great group of family, but you, you don't know who's on the other side of that camera, and that's what no. I preach to my kids. Jen was saying that yeah. uh, he is also used to stop stinging of uh, jellyfish bite and jellyfish. Okay, now I'm and, gonna come sting and net up. I'm going to come to you as a Florida boy, all right? Born, raised right here in South Florida. I'm going to tell you that my entire life, we have been taught that if you get stung by a man of war, which is a uh, Portuguese jellyfish, you either pee on it, you put vinegar on it, or you put a raw piece of meat on it. Now, over the years, people have said, oh, that doesn't work, and it, that's bull crap, and it's a wives' tale. I have done all three in my life. And the reason the pee works for the stinging is it has um, vinegar in it, basically. Not and it's sterile. Yeah. It's, it's, basically, and, it's basically like you're pissing rubber, pardon my French, but you're peeing rubbing alcohol is basically oh, what you're doing. <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, so if you ever get a jellyfish sting you, like we've had, I had a person that was like my, brother, like my brother and I had to pee on his leg because it, it hurts. I mean, imagine you have fire wrapped around your leg. It's not just, you get a little spot, they get on there and they wrap themselves around you. And it's like having hellfire burning your leg, even after you got the thing off of you. So well, most of the time it's not, you don't even know it's on you. You're hit it. That in, but yeah. we're part of it. You don't see them. They, they look like, okay. To me, a blind guy, even on shore, because they do come up on shore. And that's another way people get stung and hurt is they don't see them and they step on them or they think that they're dead. They're not. The jellyfish is maybe about yay big, but the tentacles are six, seven, eight, ten 10 feet long. And they're ribbon thin and translucent. The jellyfish, to me, on shore, looks like a Winn-Dixie bag or a plastic bag that has some water in it. And it's, you know, you can see through it, and it's not really, that's really what they look like. They look, they're jelly, for, try, <laughs> for a perfect name. Jen, try the desktop version of the mobile device instead of using the YouTube app. It has more options. Um, so long. Yeah. 
you were talking about stinging netta look for a fern uh they have the baby little uh shoots with the curly q on it that will stop okay. the stinging netta also i was talking about that earlier that was that plant you mentioned stinging netta yeah, yeah she okay. she brought up stinging netta and uh but uh the little ferns they have little curly cues yeah when yeah they're first coming out <laughs> mash that up and rub it across the stinging netta it'll stop your stinging that's a big delicacy up here when they're ready is the little tips on the fern People oh yeah I, them, I, uh, like solid yeah uh Sorry, I'm reading the chat. Go, uh, that's why I like having you guys on here because well, I'll pick the right time while you're yapping. I'll come over here and read some comments. <laughs> yeah. that's to do it. We're a great team, I tell you what. <laughs> uh, panel, I, I, I'm a big uh, believer in the panels. They help, you know. It's, you have three creators helping you out right now. Right after the stream, I'm going to share it out. That means my viewers are going to see it, you know what I mean? So... You, Yep. Your reach gets gets out there a, a little bit better, and and what I love is is the not just the comments here tonight. I, I eat these comments up like you don't even know. Um, it's the comments afterwards. Hey, infantry! This was an amazing stream. It was filled with knowledge, but fun. And 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 talking to to Shiner guy today, he was like, you know, infantry. I noticed that that your videos have increased from like 10 minutes to 20 minutes. It, why is that? So I said, well, to be honest, completely honest with you, it has to do with once we become monetized, which I am not yet. So if you guys do want to help out, PayPal it's, is it's only eight. You only need to do an eight minute video now. Well, it here's the thing. Your... Right. I understand that. But anything over 10 minutes enables us for more commercials. So in a sense, from ten to twenty, mid roll, yeah, right. I'm 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 locking more potential for us to grow as a channel. For me to get to Boone's house, for me to get to to Coyote's house, for me to get to you watching right here. I want to come to your house and do what you do and experience the outdoors. I don't want it to all be about me, but I can't do this out of a disabled pocketbook. No, I hear that. I'm the same right. way. That's why I don't, uh, oh. I can't, I've already went through it. My right. channel would be all about my six by six. I wouldn't do no other video, no other. but six by six videos. You know right. what I mean? As, as we discussed last week, Boons, I want to be able to come in and showcase people that are more amazing than we are. That, you know, the, 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 the one arm lady from yeah. Paradox Sports that I know that goes mountain climbing or the guy with no legs at jet ski races. These are, you know, there's. Pretty soon you're going to have to start turning people down to come up on the panel because you're only going to want maybe six at the most, you know what I mean? Oh, I, honestly, I don't, the most, so. I don't think I want to go past like three or four at the most because I've watched streams with multiple people and I, I get confused on yeah. who's talking, who's what's going on. It's just too many people. And then you get the over talking. At least if we over talk, I hear, I hear you and I know to stop because there's a little delay, but if you got like six or eight people, who the hell knows what's going on? That's just too much it, for me. For me, that's too much. It's like you said, you need the right, um, right type of creators that kind of know to hold their own, when to talk, when to, you know, it's, right. it's your show. See, you know, and, so, and see we're that, here for you. I'm not about the, it's me. It's like, I've told you guys throughout the school. You, yeah, you got something to say, say it because, I come from radio. We don't have the visual. Like I have to remind myself to look at this camera and not the laptop. Um, when you're on radio, you just talk. You just we're we're in this chit chatting. I used to have have celebrities go, "Hey, you know, infantry, you're gonna send me the, the the list of commercials or the list of questions." No, why not? Because I don't know what I'm gonna ask you. I never do. I come into it as a viewer. I don't come into it as a host, as a creator in this case. I come into this as the person on the other side of the lens. Who is that? I They don't know spit about what I'm talking about. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But I'm talking to the person there that I don't know. 
So I want to give as much info, like a perfect example, today's video, um, for those that haven't seen it, it's the hammock video. I did a basic camping hammock setup with a, just a tarp, a hammock, and some tree straps and some rope. Very simple, just to get you out there, get you camping, get you trying it. Papa Rome's wrote me today, and if you guys don't know Papa Rome's, check him out. Another amazing channel. Good guy. He's been with me for a long time. And it, 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 it warmed me inside to get this kind of comment when someone tells you, you know, Infantry, you are very good at what you do. You covered the knots. You covered the ins, the outs. You told them what, how to put the stakes in the ground. Who thinks of things like that? So you did all in all an amazing job on telling the whole story. And that, guys, that is I what we do. I think the same way he does with your presentations, you know, like um, I said it last week, you're very on cue, on point. Uh, you don't fumble. You know, uh, I don't know if uh, you retake and retake your, your videos, but that's, no. that's the way I have to do it. It's never in one shot, you know, no. like, most I of my do it stuff, three or four times and pick the I best. I do it in one cut if I can, if I mm -hmm. can't. And I'm going to let, let me maybe maybe I'll educate you guys a little bit on on the way we were taught in broadcasting school. When you're doing audio for a commercial or you're doing a voiceover, you don't have to worry so much. I can be like, let me give you an example here. Ford, the brand new truck for you, the Ford F-150 now with 250 horsepower. Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> the Ford F-150 with 350 horsepower. You see what I did there? I only took a small piece, but I stopped and rewound, right? When you're doing audio, you only have to step back a few words. When you're doing video, step back the whole damn sentence and start over again. This way, when you make your cut, you're making a clean cut visually as well as audio wise and try not to what I do in all my videos. I talk with my hands. If you do that, then your people are going to see cuts because you're not going to be in the same place every time when you do the thing. So when you guys are doing your videos, let's say you fumble to make a professional fixer up. Stop. Repeat that sentence and you should be kosher. Yeah, I do the same. Because like I say, uh, I usually fumble my sentences or slur over my words. So, uh, yeah. And I say so a lot. E enough where I can probably open up a sweatshop. I sew so much. I'm trying to stop saying guys. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, guys. Guys this. Well, guys. No, that's good. You're communicating. It's uh, at the end of my sentence. You, um, oh, so, so, you know, like. It's like <laughs> it's, going, um, um, um. You get what is called, Boone? And, um, every day. It's a, it's, a thought word. it's a thought word. It's a word used for you to say to exactly. trigger or, or, or initiate a thought response. What, now, here's what I'm going to tell you in broadcasting school that we were taught. Hey, Boons, you don't know what you're going to say, don't have nothing to say? Shut the hell up, period. When you think about what you're going to say, start talking. Nobody wants to hear about what you don't know what you want to talk about. And that was from a director of six broadcasting schools across the country that sat down and told me that. Because when you go, um, um, yeah, those are thought words. Rather than spill your thought and go, um, 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 stop, pause for a minute. Because it's video. After that sentence ends, you could cut it all out and chop it down to where it's perfect. So that's when you go. And I've done this in my videos. You guys don't see it in the outtakes. Um, I've gone and go, oh, hell, what was I saying again? We were talking about this. and I'll retrain my thought. And if I have to, I will start the whole paragraph over again. So what, basically, you're going to back at it if you make those mistakes. Because at the end of the day, what you want to try to achieve, Boons, is what you say all the time. I can go a long period of time with no error. It looks that way. It doesn't happen that way. I'm just like you, man. I mess up a lot, <laughs> especially when it comes to reading fine print on the back of a stupid bottle that I can't even see. And I'm not going to have you guys go looking at this, looking at me trying to No, I'm going to take it off camera. I'm going to read it on my damn cell phone, blow it up as big as I can, memorize as much as I can. And that's the information you guys end up with. <laughs> I'm probably gonna end up stepping down. You know, I haven't even looked, 
I have not even looked at the time. It is one o'clock. See, we've been going three hours. Yeah, don't you are. Care. You know, you guys are record breakers with me. All right, we don't mind. Record. All right, I don't mind. So, well, I just I, got a phone call. Somebody's got a raccoon uh, harassing their dogs. Hey, don't forget your buddy wants a raccoon. If y'all send me a raccoon hat, a Paul Bunyan hat, I promise I will wear the damn thing all day, every day. I want me a I, I want a coyote I, hat. I don't hot. care. I would not care, man. I'm, I mean, the fact that y'all sent, well, somebody would send one to me and have it made would be one. I would love to get my own coyote or my own raccoon and have someone make the hat, obviously, out of my own thing. But I've told Finley. I don't know if y'all know Finley Kennels. Yeah, Finley Creek. Dude. Yeah. yeah, I love Finley. That dude used to me and him night shift. He would keep me going to the end of my shift uh, every night, except uh, he got me pissed off because he made me hungry. I hate going through the drive through with Finley. If you go through the drive through with Finley, y'all better be able to go get burgers at four in the morning. Because if not, That's how he starts his live streams. I, you <laughs> see, and I'm sitting there in the radio station. Nobody around. It's four in the morning. There's nothing open but the gas station. That's what I have to look forward to, people. Gas station food. And here's yeah. Finley with a double cheese and mushroom burger at four in the morning and French fries. And I'm like, Finley, I love you, but I hate you right now. <laughs> Every morning it started that way. It was like, man, Finley, I'm hungry. And, you know, I, mm. but yeah, no, Finley was going to get me a hat. Um, I put it out to Coyote. I want a coon if, skin. If I hat. could get a raccoon that wasn't a nuisance animal situation, uh, just a me going out and get a raccoon, then I could get you one made up. But it's like most of the time I'm getting called to go do it, and I can't keep the nuisance animal for. Oh, okay, okay. See, I'm learning. I didn't know that that wasn't the case. I thought you could keep them. Nope. Uh, all those beavers that I caught recently. Uh, the three coyotes that I just caught recently, uh, the raccoons I'm about to go try to shoot here in a minute. Uh, I can't keep any of it because they were all nuisance animals. And by the way, for those watching on the replay, I have the new house. I have the new studio area, which we are, you know, this is we're working on it. Um, Flowrider Hillbilly sent me a bear to hang up. If you, anybody has any, uh, what do you call them, mounts, mm -hmm. I guess is what you would call them. If you have any mounts of animals that Bulls. you would do, I, I don't know what you would call them. I guess mounts, right? Mounted I've whatever. Got, no, I've got skulls. That would be cool, too. Skulls. I've got, I've Thing got raccoon skulls. I've got rat skulls. I've got mice skulls. I, I want beaver skulls. When I bring you guys in here and, and I'm, I'm, I'm able to have you guys here as guests, I want, when you come in here, I want the cabin vibe of hunting, fishing, and outdoors. So for me, the, the, the duck that you have sitting on the wall you really don't care about would mean the world to what we're trying to do here. Uh, and it would have a story behind it too because like Flo's Bear – I have the bear skin rug, the full head, the feet, everything. I'm going to mount it. I have the information on where it was killed, when it was killed, how it was killed. And that's going to go on a little plate that I'm going to make for that. So when you guys get to come and you say, you know, everybody, I've heard so much about Flo to Bear. I'm going to take a selfie with Flo to Bear. And that's what I want. You want that's it like that? You see my skins? Moose skull. That's awesome. See, that's awesome. Things like that to decorate the new place would be clutch. I mean, I'm not asking y'all to send me like a full bob. I mean, if you want to, great. But you want to send me a full bobcat to look like he's ready to pop on something. There's you my know, bobcat. See? See what I'm talking about? I See what I mean? I'm missing out in the world. There's my, <laughs> bob my bobcat and my 45-pound raccoon. I'm waiting on Boons to pull out the giant moose antlers. Hello, everybody. I'm Boonco. You ain't got no moose antlers. Come on now. That's a uh, moose. Wow. wow. See, there nice. it is. There's the moose. I like the red light in it. That's cool. Now, is that Boonco or is that part of the moose? All, all my skulls. It's just the batteries are dead in these ones. 
And then I have a remote where I made a video on it where uh, they change lights. I can set them up different colors. and That's oh, freaking wow. awesome. What do you use, LEDs inside of there? Yeah, it's a little LED light. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. That would, hey, you got to send me one. That would give my kids nightmares. You got to send me one. <laughs> the skull? I'll even and make them. Usually I shoot them, so they're trophies. But, but if <laughs> I have some deer in the house for Halloween. Hey, if anybody out there has any any sheds that they don't want or that aren't they aren't using, let me put it the right way. I know everybody wants them. They're if not you have, big. they're only little little spike horn four pointers. Well, it it doesn't have of them. size. I want to teach. I'm teaching my boys what we as hunters use sheds and why we go out for shed season and and things like that. I want to show him or show both my boys what the clacking. That we do to draw oh, the buck. The rattling. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When you rattle them in. I haven't been out for shed season. This this year would be my first shed year if I catch it the right time because we're in North Florida and there are deer here. But before this, we didn't have that opportunity. So if anybody out there, I mean, you can reach me at infantry outdoors at yahoo.com. Uh, mods, you guys all know how to get a hold of me. If anybody has even just a pair, just so I can teach my kids what that is and why they do it and what actual sheds look like. So when we go out, we know to find them. There it is. That's it. Like that. Yep. And nothing draws two males in worse than two males fighting. It, these are what? the two that I found uh, last year. And, when is, uh, educate me, guys. When is shed season? When should I go look for sheds? Here, here in Canada, it's February. And the back half of the winter? Yeah. Yeah. Just okay. Yeah. Mid, maybe the late January, February, they start shedding. Anybody yeah. in Florida in the chat want to drop that bomb? When in Florida, do we, or Texas, or? When in Texas. Well, yeah. Well, Texas is the only place I can relate to Florida because it's, it's as hot as the devil's armpit and just <laughs> bad. Um, so if anybody in Texas can tell me it would be closely related to me. I mean, I'm South, I'm, I'm under Georgia, anybody in Georgia, anybody in South Carolina, North Carolina, um, Alabama, anywhere around there could tell me when shed season would be for us. If it, I'll start looking in February, but you never know. Your blind buddy might be out there for a month when, when we're different. I, you would, know? I would say start looking December, January, February. Okay, that's for sure. Because I, I definitely want to yeah. get out of that because and they they start dropping a around December ish uh, right. out here, but it's usually so snowy we can't get out there until the end of February. Yeah, no snow we don't have to worry about here. That's for, I wish. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm saying, hoping winter to drive my kids to snow for the first time, but that's like a four hour drive. <laughs> or a trip to Boone's house or 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 Kyle's no, that's far. <laughs> you know like 36 it's hours out here. 40 I'm hours here in Washington I'll get you into some snow I hey I'm one of them people where I might be from Florida but I think if, oh excuse me if I lived in a in a snow area I would look I'll mail you some might turn in the you water know, by I, the time I, it gets there. Believe it or not, I, I'll blow your mind, Boons. Yeah, you give me a snowboard, I'll whip your ass down the mountain every time. Probably would. I, I love snowboarding. Um, I've been several times. I, I I love it. I enjoy the snow. Maybe that's the Florida boy in me that I've never had it. But I look at it as, you know, career-wise, when I was in radio, I can do radio from – like what we're doing right here. I can patch this feed into the radio station and guess what? We're live broadcasting. I could run a line through the phone and I could broadcast my equipment from anywhere. I used to broadcast from car parking lots. Um, we used to broadcast from, from events. We broadcast from the uh, grand opening of this restaurant. I could broadcast anywhere. So a snow day to me translates into I'm going to sit in my pajamas or butt ass naked right in front of this microphone. And we're going to do a live broadcast with my, my cocoa, with my marshmallows in it. And the kids are going to go build a snow fort. And when daddy's done, guess what? I only got to walk out the door to go play with my kids. 
I don't think snow would have been bad at all, to be honest. Now, yeah, until, the, until you tell you live six months out of the year and you're tired of freezing, that's what I hear. <laughs> and that, and they, you know, but but listen, Boons, think so about you it, dude. Canadian, you hate it for six months <laughs> out of the year. You get to do events and activities that I don't, oh, that I can't. So I get what is, you, yeah, I you get, get what you're saying. In a boat, you're like fishing something, something else, because uh, you got freedom. You put your line in, then you have fun. Drive the machine around, make a fire, do a bunch of and stuff. Um, you never get bored. God willing, this winter, come hell or high water, I've, I've had this in the works for two years now, I'm coming up to one of you Canadians' places that I've had open door invites to, and I am going ice fishing. I wanted to go this year. This whole corona thing screwed that up. I'm hoping... Because, you know, we can't come to you right now. I'm not allowed. No, 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 no. Can't come see Booms. Border won't let me. No. Nope. But hopefully a month, two months, three months. We don't know what's going to happen. Eventually, I'm going to get to Booms and up to my Canadian families and all that stuff. I want to ice fish. I want. I've never seen Four Seasons. Don't know what that is. I've never. I have experienced hot and I've experienced snowboarding in winter. No between. So there's a lot that you guys get that we don't get. So those activities for somebody that never does them is is I eat that stuff up, you know. I may freeze my balls off, but I'm gonna eat it up. <laughs> <laughs> I even told Darren, I says, dude, if you it, we got the perfect video, I'm gonna take off in, in down here in Florida, and I'm gonna wear the typical Floridian tourist getup. The Hawaiian button-down shirt, the sunglasses, the Colombian drug dealer hat, the flip-flops. And I'm going to show up to Manitoba, Canada in negative whatever in that get-up just for the video. But you damn sure better have warm clothes waiting for me in the car. Because <laughs> when I walk out and I do that, oh, my God, you better have warm clothes waiting on me. <laughs> It'll be a shock if it's really cold out. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah can you imagine the people in the canadian airport looking at me walking with flip-flops button down like like i'm a magnum pi or something <laughs> i'm gonna freeze but kind it of makes sounds like when my parents and i flew from uh we my parents joined staff with campus crusade so we moved from alabama to california when i was 13 and we flew back and forth a couple times looking for house and stuff mm -hmm. and uh one of the trips we got diverted and had to go to denver or wherever we went i can't remember mm -hmm. and i'm used to going from california to alabama and it was summertime so it was hot and humid yeah i had khaki tight pants on with uh penny loafers no socks but I mean, that man said penny loafer. Sure. But sure enough, uh, no short leaf, sh short I love shirt. Loafers. And they diverted us to this other city and we stepped off the plane. And about the third step, I stepped in about that much snow, about a foot and a half, I guess it was. And all that snow went into my shoes. Oh my God, and I was overs. cold. Did did the penny did the penny lose the shine? Oh yeah. Oh, it, it, hey, the, young the people penny. have no freaking clue what I'm talking about. Okay, young people have no idea what penny loafers are, but they are the most. You are gangster if you have a pair of penny loafers. Old school gangster. If you even know what I'm talking There's about, slippers the, now going to the shoe shiners. I'm I, going I, to the shoe shiner on the train. Why are you waiting on the train? You don't see that That's no more. School. No, you don't, hey, bro. You don't see that. The shoe shine boy that that fed his family every week. You don't see that no more. Oh no! They're, now they're just uh, they have a cup and they're on the corner. They don't want to work for their, for anything these days. Wow, Canada's just, just like have America. their hand out. That's funny. Canada's just like America. Mm -hmm. Sad, but guys, I know I'm keeping you up late. God, I want to thank you very very much, but. Producer, did we come up with a topic for next week? No. It's no. not that late. It's only 10 o'clock. 
Yeah, um, it's 10 o'clock your time. Add four, buddy. One o'clock for me. It's one o'clock. <laughs> yeah, me and Boonsies, we on the same time over here, okay? We on the same time clock. Like, I don't even see the producer anymore. I just see a computer screen. So she slouched her ass down in a chair to where I can't even hear. But I see she's commenting like, holy hell, because it pops up yellow on my screen. Um, yeah. So I know she's still alive over there. <laughs> but um, all right. Well, I've got you both under the gun. What is the topic for next week then? Guess I'm going to let you guys pick it. I chose this week's. <laughs> How about in, in trying to do something like Mo Homesteading said about raising her chickens, but like su uh, self sustaining yourself food wise. We could do either homestead. gardens, uh, yeah. livestock. Uh, yeah, we can do. You know, believe it or not, something I talked about to my media rep that I was I was hoping if I was able to get a home with the property that's just us. Um, our, we, we share the 20 acres that we're on. If it was just us, I was actually going to start a second channel and call it blind guy homesteading and, and show what I, you know, what I know and all of that. But I think that's a great topic. I really do. So next well, week, especially we today, it's like, because of the, the pandemic, I was so late on, on the garden. I only got a couple of peppers this year compared to other years where you get 20 peppers a plant, you know? So, yeah, I'm one of those people I see here in Florida. We, we get peppers like damn near year round. So your one yeah, pepper no, it's, just shells out product. It's our, it, it already got cold enough that they, they stopped producing here at night. To, so. I would like to do it. Yeah, you know what? That's what we're going to do. Maybe can anybody reach Mo between now and then and I, see if she, yeah. and see if he wants or, to be the guest next week? That'd be good. I'll step down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, get, give her a chance to come up and, and share yeah, her. No, there's no, no issues there. Um, I know one of the ones I watched, Mrs. Green Thumb. I don't know if you guys ever ever seen that channel. Um, I watched that the other day of how to grow potatoes in a five-gallon bucket. And the steps and, and the ways to do it to get the best results. I'm all for that stuff. I'm one of the people that said the day I buy a home, my first investment is solar and a well. And I'm off the grid, off the pockets, off the I like you can do, do UK. I would or hydro or something. You know, living in Florida, put a damn windmill up. There's wind all year round. Um there's so many possibilities that yes, I think next week we will we will do homesteading. Uh, it's going to be interesting for me to come up with a thumbnail, but uh, <laughs> we're going to do it. And if you guys can reach out to Mo and tell Mo to get a hold of me so I can get her the link, I would love for Mo to be next week's guest. If not, if anybody in the chat wants to be a guest, drop it in the comments now. You have to be doing some type of homesteading already in order to. Uh, I guess qualify, right? That would be the way to put it. In order to qualify for next week's live stream, you must be a homesteader or at least homestead some way, shape, or form. Garden, uh, milk a cow, make cheese from the goat. Kill the chicken. You know, if you're Jamaican, eat the goat. Nothing I'd better than go shoot deer and elk. <laughs> I'd like to uh, no, get I, I, Coyote, I'm liking you less and less as the stream goes on here, buddy. You know, <laughs> yeah. What are you all gonna say? Listen, y'all gotta send me some meat. You, somebody gotta find a way to send something to me because that might I be wanna... easier for him. I can't get it across the border. Yeah, I know, I know. I have to come and kill it myself. I get, in order that, to... I get that question a lot. Send me a moose steak, you know what I mean? And I don't so even I, care no, about I don't think so. How about beaver? I would like to try a beaver. I would like to try nutria rat, which we have here in Florida. I haven't seen one in 40 years of living here, but we have nutria rat. I would like to try that. I would like I you mean get a hold of my dad, he'll get you on some nutri wraps. I you know, Coyote, 40 years I've lived here. 40. That's a long damn time. I have not seen a nutria rat ever in the Everglades, ever in the city. I've seen possum, I've seen armadillo, I have seen a lot of things. I've even seen a lot of running through the damn neighborhood. I have they not lived seen in Florida for 10 years and I saw a bunch of them. Again, I, I want the odd stuff that you guys get. I would like uh, when I can later on, I've been told I'm allowed to trap around the property. Hopefully I'm going to check with FWC, which is Florida Fish and Wildlife and confirm that 
if we are in fact allowed to trap on the property, I'm going to try some raccoon. I might be the one going, hey, Kyle, what do I do with this thing now that I killed it? How do I make a hat? Here in Canada, <laughs> you have to start with a hunting license first. Which I have. You're, That's a hunting you're license. able to trap certain small games with snares. You can't use actual snap traps. Right. You need a trapper's license. No, I would use uh, um, we, we have we have now this much I do know from watching Trapper J and fishing with Flair um, around my property. Everybody here has dogs, so we'd have to use dog proofs. If you guys don't know what a dog proof is, look it up. It's a basically a two. Make sure that they're legal on. in your state because they're not Correct. legal in my yeah. state. Okay. Um, Regulations, yeah. Always check right. regulations, man. If not, then you can always you can always revert to the I call them snap cages. They're like cages about yay big, and it yeah, has a nice. trap door and a pedal on the other side. He goes in, he steps on the pedal, poof, trap door closes. Bob's your uncle. You got dinner. Um, live those trap. are pretty much yeah, live traps. Those are pretty much legal everywhere because yeah. the the United States Humane Society will tell you to lie if you live trap the animal we'll come get it for you <laughs> yeah right um <laughs> so live traps are not pretty much here what is it not out here no here either we're not allowed trapping uh, nuisance animals we're supposed to call uh like you said either the humane society or animal control or like we don't have that no more. or you believe it or not, in the city, I'm the nuisance animal trapper. That's that's what I do is nuisance animal trapping. But if mm -hmm. I catch something and try to call somebody to come take care of it, they'd be like, "No." <laughs> in the city, we had we had a snake that I couldn't tell if it had a pointy nose or a round nose. So in that instance, when you have children, you call for help. Um, this is one instance. Another instance was with a with an opossum. Um, we called animal control. It doesn't exist anymore. We called humane society. We only take dogs and cats. Then they tell me, well, you need to start looking into a non -for non for profit organization. So I called three of them. All three of them told me the same thing. If you trap it, we'll come get it. So translation, family, I have to buy the trap. I have to set the trap. I have to catch the nuisance animal. I have to do all the work and spend all the money. And you're just going to come pick it up. So I said, well, what if I just shoot it? Oh, oh, you can't do that. You can't tell me you're going to do that on the phone. And then, uh, excuse me. I can't tell you I'm going to kill something when I'm asking for your help. I'm handicapped with children and you still won't come and help. You're telling me if I trap it, you'll come pick it up. I'm going to shoot it. Have a good day. Like, done. Yep. Done. City or otherwise. Um, I remember this as a kid. We had a reptile store down the street from our house, and my sister raised pigeons. Reptiles and pigeons never go good together. We had anaconda snakes, pythons, tegus, monitor lizards, all kinds of things come in and try to eat the pigeons and the pigeon eggs. So... Dad, being the good guy he was, tried to catch the animals and say, okay, well, come get them. Well, when the tegu almost took his finger off, that was the end of that. That <laughs> was, yeah, no, that was, I don't care what lizard you are, you're getting a 22 long rifle to the back of the head. When the police shows up, dad walks out with a rifle in one hand like this and a lizard in the other hand and goes, do you want to take me to jail? I don't think so. Have a good night, officers. Bye-bye. And this happened a lot. I mean, like one reason they, they don't let us do that here and shoot everything we want is because eventually you're going to think, oh, there's a nuisance animal. You end up shooting the neighbor's cat or dog. Oh, yeah. yeah and it's yeah, happened before yeah. out here. Yeah, no, we literally lived four blocks from a reptile distributor that was the only distributor in South Florida. And what they used to do is they get their boxes. They literally, the animals came in cardboard boxes. And whatever animals they didn't think were lively enough went in that box and went into the dumpster. Well, Rocky over here decides I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. And he gets out and he ends up in my yard. The, then what? Then what do you do? 
I get what you're saying, but when you're literally pulling out three, four foot reptiles, alligator looking reptiles, every time the police show up because you fired around, it gets to be a point of, of the police know you at that point that your nuisance is now known like for you boons if you had a, a an issue with the nuisance animal let's say just let's just say raccoon because raccoon are painting the balls anyway you shoot one raccoon Drunk. the police come you hold him up look i killed the raccoon dude he was eating my, my trying to go after my dog uh three weeks go by you kill another one bigger raccoon he, he went after the dog too look you're holding it up every single time there becomes a point where they're going to be like well, you know what boons is a raccoon guy bro forget it he must be like putting raccoon pee in water and making ice packs or something because you know, <laughs> raccoon pack. You know, I'm making a raccoon pack because why am I here every other week for a damn another raccoon? Uh, you see what I mean? It's not like it's the neighbor's dog at a certain point. And my dad had the trump card anyway. He was like, you know what? My son is legally blind. If this animal would rip his freaking arm off. He kind of had a scapegoat no matter what, what he shot. Oh, it could have hurt the handicapped kid. Okay, I killed it. Done. Nobody questioned it. <laughs> <laughs> Great hunting partner, right? He can shoot anything he wants. It was going to hurt the handicapped kid. Can we eat him now? That, that, that's one good thing about being disabled. Uh, I can shoot from my vehicle. Yeah. yeah in up, some but... state, yep. Absolutely. In some states, you can. Here too, uh, there's special. My friend has to go 50 yards off the road before he can shoot his animal. That's right. And That's right. I, I just drive down the road and go, oh, there's my animal. Dink. But <laughs> now, now, at least in my state, if you are a handicapped person using a handicap quote vehicle, you must register that handicap quote vehicle with the FWC. If it's not in that quote unquote handicap vehicle, you screwed up. See, it's just a password. And the we pass have a can go between we any need. vehicle. It's just a little oh, piece of paper that we carry. Oh, we put that on vehicle. our dash. Okay, I got you. Like a handicap sticker. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, but we can we transfer that food. to different vehicles just in case, you know, like my mom doesn't drive, but she has their handicap pass. Right. When the she does her hospital visits, she right, doesn't right. have to walk a mile in the parking lots. You know? yep. Like, yep. I've got one in the truck too, believe it or not. And it took me damn near... 35 years before I ever got one because I'm a believer in the resources that are available to us disabled people are there for a reason. If you take something, for example, a handicap pass, and I know damn good and well, I can walk to the store. I can walk. I have no problems. I used to believe, why do I need to take this pass when the person needy can have it? Well, the way the system works ain't that way, family. And if the government or anybody gives you something because you're disabled, take it. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in the wholehearted, most genuine way to say, take it. Take it and use it and run with it and screw what you think in your brain that this guy, can, I, he can't walk, but I can. Because that guy might not even get it the way the world works. So take what you can get and utilize it to your benefit. Because if you don't, someone that doesn't need it is going to take it. And that's at least where I live in Florida and especially in South Florida. So I don't mean to be like be mean or anything like in, in that way. I hope you guys take that in good context, but if they offer you a handicap pass, take it. Why not? You're entitled to it. Take free, everything you're entitled to. The free fishing license here when you have yeah. your handicap pass. For me, it's free hunting and fishing, and I can not only hunt and fish, I can get scallops, I can get lobster, I can, uh, I qualify ahead of everybody else for the gator hunt, which is a lottery here in Florida. Um, I go head of uh, closer to the head of the line in the bear hunt, but the only things it doesn't basically cover is gator and bear. Everything else is fair game. Everything. I get I get discounted, but I still have to pay for my hunting and fishing license. But every license that I get, a normal person normally is paying um, about $200, and I'm paying about $85. But Good. That's that, that is only that discount is only for 
disabled veterans over 30 percent not just disabled people because i had a guy that was disabled 100 percent and he didn't get discount he had to pay the regular price but because i'm a veteran and i'm a hundred percent now mm. if i was straight hundred percent i would get uh a free hunting and fishing license. But because I'm the, the way the VA does this is weird. I'm it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. we don't have to go into that. It's ridiculous. It really yeah. is. Like some of the stuff that our vets have to jump through hoops to do is is <clears throat> astounding. Now I get asked all the time, infantry, are you military? Are you ex-military? I am not. I wanted to be military. My dad was military. My grandfather was military. I wanted that, but I couldn't because not even under 4F in the United States, which translates to 4F means you are in, but you are disabledly in to a point that you can still function and do your day-to-day -day activity, but limited. Um, I've always wanted to be military, but... I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It happens. Oh, uh, see, it does happen. My videos. It does, you're right. It does happen. Okay. It's not, infantry is not perfect. I can't go four hours without stumbling. Um, I got to get off. I really have, to, really have to use the washroom, bro. So I'm going to probably step down. All right, brother. Well, you have a great night. Thank you, you again. As always. Guys, we'll check out next week. week. We'll cool. see you yeah. when you drop your vids, bro. Awesome, brother. Right Thank you so much. Appreciate you. No problems. Nice chat with you. Bro. Later, later, right? Trapping was good uh, talking with you, being on panel with you. Yeah, make it out to Washington. Look me up. I don't make it to the states too often. <laughs> yeah, no, but, listen, if Canada, you, Canada won't want me back if I enter. Listen, Boons, if you do, you better be a typical Canadian and bring your butt down to Florida and see me, okay? You got to do, eh? you got to do the snowbird trip with me one time, okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to go down there and do some fishing. Yeah, man, we'd have a good time. You could even bring the family, bro. The kids, the kids will link up with the kids, and then the grown-ups will bring up with the grown-ups, and we have a good time. When we all become uh, the successful YouTube type where we can go We're across coming. countries and collab. We're coming, brother. We coming. We're all coming for that monetization that don't pay crap, but we're all coming. <laughs> all right? We, we, need, a, we need to start. Uh, we're coming for it. We need to start live streaming on Twitch. I need you know, 3,000 watch hours and 150 subscribers. You go, brother. You go. I made I made 1,100 today, so that's good. Um, they're like we've done a, 100 subscribers in a month, which is great. Um, watch time, to be honest with you, I don't look at it no more. I don't. If it's gonna see the thing with YouTube guys is don't get yourself you know get don't get your panties in a bunch. Don't get pissed that you're not growing. The thing with YouTube is this. It's very simple. It's a mathematical algorithm. If you produce, you will grow, period. If you miss a week, you will backslide. Yeah. It is a mathematical algorithm. If you post once a week, that's 52 videos a year. I've done this, so I know. 52 videos a year will get you nowhere. The average Daily post to YouTube is 300,000 videos a day. Every day. Do you think you're going to put a drop in a bucket with 300,000 and you put one video out? You're one of three to 100,000. Now, when you get to Lunkers TV, Andrew Flair, uh, Demolition Ranch, where you're putting out five videos a week, you're actually making a difference. You're not, as, us, as small guys, that doesn't mean... Put five videos out a week. Boom, I'm going to hit a million. No. Yeah, I know. It doesn't work. That doesn't work. I, I've been trying that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It takes time. It takes – you have to be – nobody in radio, nobody in TV hit the glamour in one video. It doesn't work. It's never going to happen. Keep at it. Stay at it. And those that are passionate about it will get a check. Those that are, oh, oh God, dude, uh, I've done 50 videos and I oh, only got 100 subscribers and, and, and I'm not doing anything on any platform and I'm not promoting. This is a job, guys. If you want to make money, it's a job. If you want to piss off and just have a good time and drink beer, that's what it is.
But if you want to make money, this is a job that you have to put. How many hours you put in at your job? Do you put eight hours a day? Great. Then you got to put eight hours. If you put a 10 hour day, then you should be putting 10 hours. There's a 24 hour day. Oh, we're going to give you four hours of sleep. That's it. And that's what you do. If I could get this editing down, I would have a lot more videos out. But well, I, I thought the same way for the longest time, and it's not. It's about content. It's about it is. yourself it is. as a creator. You know, what, what, what Wright's saying is he's trying to learn how to edit. He is in. I, the I learning. have reading problems. I, I can't read. He's and in the learning curve still, and we're trying to get him. Uh, matter of fact, what's the program you use, Coyote? Vimeo? Filmora. Nine. Filmora. Filmora? Yeah. If anybody yeah. watching yeah. you is Filmora, he, need, uh, he needs here's help. A name, here's a name for you. This is all he does is Filmora. Daniel Bertel. All he does is for Filmora. His name is Daniel Bertel. He'll tell you exactly how to edit a video, what to do, how to put in your special effects, how to do green screens. And it's, it's only like I've got six videos right now that I've got on hold because like one of them, I'm trying to do a double picture. A picture and picture. Thing. Yeah. Picture well, and picture. Not necessarily a picture and picture because a that's usually screen. a big picture with a little picture. I, I want to like a split screen. Yeah. That's still and picture. Because it's two different trail cameras from two different angles showing right. the same thing. Right. No, that's still picture and, and picture. You're just defining what size. In, in the editing software, when you go into picture and picture, let's say you have. Like we have three people right now. I'm big. You guys are small. There'll be different options. They're yeah. right. And it's not that there's different options. You may have to go up on that window that you're looking at and grab what you want and stretch it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, or I, I figured that out. part out. But picture in picture is exactly what it translates to. If you have one picture and you have another picture, no matter how you configure it, it's picture in picture. Or picture and picture, however you Which want to one's, look at it. One's good, your main one's going to give you your audio, and the, and the other one's just going to have a video beside it. Yeah, but, that's if you guys do it that way. I actually have a voice recorder plus multiple cameras, so I have multiple things to sync up. It's like I'm also trying to do a uh, time lapse. Yeah, time that's, right. Time lapse of a video, or I, I I have this much video. And I want to show it, but I want to show it in 30 seconds. Then what you're going to do is called, and, it's either called a hyperlapse, it's called a time lapse, or it's called a, a playback speed setting. Sometimes your editing program will only let you double the size of your speed. Okay, so what you want, want to do is, this is Which what means, I have to do sometimes. Gonna, is, that means you're save, only going to do 10x. Save, save the video import it again then i'm able to you know make it twice as fast as as before but if, but if you can go 10 times okay 10 times one 10 times the speed you're currently watching at is very fast i've yeah. only gone to 8x ever like if you look at today's video only, yeah. where i hung up the tarp that was only 8x I can go to 100x, and that some bitch will, you won't even see nothing. See, the um, program that he's using probably only does double double the speed. Then that would be 2x. Oh, 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 see, I typed yeah. in time lapse. How, how do you do time lapse? I went to Fomoro's page, the helper page. Well, usually it's right and in they, your, it's and how, they, how they, how they don't even know what they are like time lapse. What's time but, lapse? Uh, you're using the wrong words. That's the, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Is time is, lapse is time lapse is the way recorded. you're filming with your Correct. camera. Correct. Time lapse is how you recorded it and the way that you recorded it. What you're doing in post production, which is your editing software, is you are speeding up the playback. You're not time lapsing anything. You've already shot the footage. You want to take that footage and play it. Two times faster, three times faster, eight. I've never gone over eight. Eight is just like anything past eight, you're starting to chop unless you're shooting higher than 60 frames a second. Now, we're getting technical here. Depending like on how you shoot, 
You, you know what? Don't even talk to me, 8K. Go, go, go. Just go. go, go. <laughs> YouTube can't even talk to you at 8K. It can't even put up 4K. It's only 1080p on YouTube. Not uh, on TV. It's 4K on TV, on the TV app. You'll see the 4K symbol if you upload in 4K. Really? Yeah. That's new. That's new. That, that yeah. has normally been there. Okay, YouTube up till what you just told me. Well, I don't want to say up till what you just told me, but it's always been 1080p. We just recently went over 720. I hope you guys know that into 1080. That's uh, only that's only live streaming. We just went into the 1080p live streaming maybe last month. Because before right, that, but we, were the only, 1080, we were only able to do seven 720p correct. live streams. Correct. Yep. And and that's the thing. Now, when you shoot your video, Coyote, if you're shooting. Okay, movies, cinematic movies, are 24 frames or 25, depending on your camera, frames per second. If you're going to shoot a slightly faster than cinematic, it would be 30 frames. Your average everyday shooting speed is 30 frames per second. An action sequence, a action camera, or fishing where you're going to show, you want to slow down that hook set and get that crisp slow motion, that's 60 frames. It's like when I do my slow motion and I want to see my arrow going through the, when I shot my bow and the arrow yep. was going slowly towards yep. the target, it was 60 yep. frames you, a second. You can do 25 frames a second and slow it down, but now you're going to get it's into gonna jerk, chop jerk, it up. jerk, yeah, jerk. It's going to be jerky. It's going to be old school camera footage. Whereas if I shoot at, let's say 120 frames per second, now I've got 120 pictures in one second. That there is no more jump, jump. Now it's jump, 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 jump. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So depending on what you're going to do will determine on what your camera. Like for me, my big camera, my Canon 800D is set at 30 frames per second. The camera you're looking at me at through right now, the Acaso, all my Acasos are set at 60 frames per second. That's because they're getting a first-person perspective of what's going on. Hook set, gunshot, uh, whatever, from my view. So if I want to slow that down, which is usually what you do, you're going to want the 60 frames per second. Now, the Canon can step up to 120 and even higher. I only do that if I'm going to set it on the tripod and let it run all day. So, so right now I'm doing most of my videoing with uh, – a GoPro six and a GoPro seven. It, it doesn't matter the camera. And it, I it, set them at the highest frame that is possible. I use my my iPhone and my GoPro seven combined. Again, guys, you know, it, so. the, the camera does not matter. You can have a cheap fifteen dollar knockoff camera as long as it produces ten eighty p forty four point one hundred bits stereo. And shoots at 16 bits. You are CD quality, DVD quality, and damn near Blu-ray quality. Okay? So it doesn't matter what you're shooting on. Again, this is a basic. Um, everything that we do in here is basic. I want you guys to learn that. It all comes down to frames per second and what you're going to do with the footage. If you're going to shoot a documentary or a vlog, 25 frames per second or 24 frames is perfect. Because it gives you that cinematic touch. If you're going to go hunting and you want to catch that rifle round flying through the air with the little uh, breakaway behind it, you're going to shoot, you know, 3,000 frames per second. That way you can slow it down and get the absolute crisp best thing you're going to do. But if you don't do slow-mo and you don't care about that crap, man, 30 frames, 60 frames, 25 frames for cinematic, that's, that's what it's about. And that's I think the, the uh, GoPro 7 will do 4K. Uh, the GoPro 6, I think it'll do up to 80. Well, here's the thing to understand, too. When you get into 4K, you are getting into massive video and audio files. You're talking about a, a 64 or 128 card is going to be eaten up in a matter of minutes to hours. Um, if you shoot 1080p, the same 64 gig may give you four to eight hours. If you shoot in 720, you're going to double that. If you shoot in lower res, you're going to double that. Basically, that's the way it goes. So 4K, 
I don't, as an engineer of audio and video for years, you guys don't see me shooting in 4K and you don't, you won't. 4K Even is not, it, it's not widely available enough to warrant my time, my hard drive space, and my efforts for giant files of stuff. Some of the, some of the biggest creators like Casey Neistat, he films in the 2.7. Yeah. Okay. I love Casey. I love watching him. The reason being is you can't you can't upgrade. You, you can always downgrade your video. Right. 780, yeah. 1080p. You know what right. I mean? So. Right. And that's another thing to think of. Yes, you can shoot in 4K and you can save it to your drive. But again, what I just said to you, that 4K file is massive. It is a big file. To downgrade knowing you're going to shoot 2K, 1080. Nobody goes below 1080 anymore. So let's say 1080, 2K, something like that. Why would you, instead of taking your box that's this big and filling it to the brim, why wouldn't you just shoot in 1080 and this box that's this big, your contents are only this big? That's where I'm trying to go with it. There's nothing against it, nothing wrong with it. The ins and outs are... 4K is massive. And again, my belief, my thoughts on 4K is it's not wide enough and commonly used by everybody. Most broadband providers really don't provide you with 4K, even if they say they do, to warrant my hard drive space and my time. Now, if I'm going to do a sequence, Boons, where I'm getting that, that arrow shot and I want to see the break of the of the of the wind and everything, I'm going to shoot that sucker in 4K. <coughs> now, when you go down that 4K, you're getting amazing footage. Same thing if you speed it up. But aside from that, if it's not point specific, I'm not going to bother with it. I'm just going to stick with 1080 and, and hurry up and get through my stuff done. You know? The producer's yeah. dying over there. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to wrap it up there um, Next week we're going to do home setting uh, If one of you guys can reach out to Mo for me And drop her a link Say hey get a hold of infantry at infantryoutdoors At yahoo.com uh, He wants you to be the guest If she doesn't want to be the guest Then I'll grab one of you guys or both of you guys And we'll come back and talk about homesteading yeah, we'll any, talk about any, Anytime you need me I'm here for you bro I appreciate it bro I'm always choosing I really the same here So I, I mean, we have really good streams, and, and that's that's the important part is to be able to be up here and entertain for a long period of time with facts. You guys learn something. We have fun, and that's what I want this to be, and that's what I love about my comments is that's exactly what it is. So, fellas, before we wrap up, uh, videos coming out, right strap, and what do you got coming up here in the next couple of days? Um, I'm – Working on a video of a cat that I caught, a house cat. And I want to show that the cat uh, didn't get hurt or anything. Um, oh, come on. You didn't use a nine pistol on him? Come on, dude. <laughs> uh, it was the guy that I was trapping for. He's like, my cat's been missing since last night. <laughs> like, yeah, he's over here in my trap. <laughs> yeah, no, see, if it was down in South Florida, the Chinese man would have had it done and put up your plate in like a matter of hours. But I've also <laughs> got uh, <laughs> caught two other coyotes, and I'm trying to finish up those videos. Have you ever eaten coyote? Not yet. Uh, I got, that, that's your next video. I, I want to do a beaver, a raccoon, and a coyote. Somebody's got to do a coyote. I, I, I got to see somebody eat the damn coyote. Just somebody in, in the world has had to have eaten it. There I has think, to be. Think I'm, I'm hoping it. Trigger will send Trapper me a freaking smokers, and then I'll do a coyote catch and clean cook. I would like to see that. I would like so to see get Trigger to send me a smoker. Well, you know, they got this place called Walmart. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Listen, don't knock on Walmart. Let me tell you, you know, those, they're taking all those the smokers are five hundred dollars. No, you get the eighty-six dollar one. I swear to God, Kyle, I promise. I'm you. Tired of having the cheap one. I'm oh, ready well, to, listen. I'm, listen old, the, I'm an I, old fart. I need this shit to work. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. If you look out on my deck right now, I have a and I even wondered. 
why the hell did I pay so much money for this egg shaped Walmart grill? Y'all know what I'm talking about. The egg yeah, shaped yeah. pineapple. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm trying to figure out why a $15 egg shaped Walmart grill cost me $90. Then I got well, it home. I, I, I don't know. One of those wood pellet ones. You fill up the little bin with the wood pellets. Yeah, you set are you, lazy, you are lazy, but that's what it is. You just want to set it and forget it. You want it on Bluetooth. Uh, that's where the flavor comes the TV. from. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, from the I'm Bluetooth. getting old and decrepit. And I, I need. <laughs> he doesn't want to have to tend to fire. I, I, I used to sleep in a tent, and then I started sleeping in the back of my pickup truck for years. <laughs> and last year, or, or year before, when I came home, I told the wife, "I'm too old for this." And she goes, "You're on quit hunting." I was like, "Hell no! You go buy campers." <laughs> I went and bought me a camper. The Walmart grills don't sleep on the Walmart grills. That's all I'm trying to tell you is they've got an $89 box smoker that will get the job done and it will last for over two years. You get a year out of Walmart grill, you're good. This one will last you two years at least. And if you take care of it, it'll last longer, but it will get the job done with four racks inside to smoke with. I've used it. I have no problems with it. Yes, it does cook at a slower lower temperature which is good uh oh, if yeah. you want to boost it you just put a little fan on the side of it you'll be great but don't sleep on a walmart grill kyle 86 dollars you could get a smoker and start smoking meat i'm telling you you're just lazy you don't want to do it that's all yeah. <laughs> that's when you go hey honey so outside there's a smoker and i brought the kyle home you gotta go cook it i'll be over here drinking beer <laughs> I, I don't. I, I'd rather cook it because she's more of a, a grease cooker, and so and I can't eat greasy stuff anymore. No, hey, you look, you don't have the producer. The producer. Yeah, we were having the the talk about the spaghetti sauce. I think one day. Yeah. In the chat. Yeah, yeah I'm the same way. Uh, I had like a macaroni with uh, all it was was diced tomatoes last night. I was up almost half the night with heartburn. Really oh, bad yeah. heartburn, you know. So. I, Oh, in the world, it's like I can't <laughs> hardly eat chocolate anymore, and I, I'm a chocoholic. Uh, the oils and oh. chocolate, uh, really, I, I can't even eat vegetables anymore. Me, it's um, uh, like the I think it's just the tomatoes itself, anything tomato yeah. sauce, pizza, acid, spaghetti, lasagnas. No, that's my favorite thing to eat. I'm a well, pasta I, guy, you know. So, I, mm -hmm. one night I ate spaghetti. 24 hours later, I was in the emergency room, uh, or 48 hours actually, uh, in the emergency room with an IV in each arm <laughs> because I had dehydrated from throwing up and pooping so much. Yeah, but you know that could that could be where you ate it from, and not so much the the content. My wife but, made it, but you never know. You never but, know. But my wife makes homemade spaghetti and lasagna and she made spaghetti that night then a week later i had a uh, bowl of uh, chili 48 hours later i was in the hospital again oh you know it's yeah, crazy i don't know what it, what it is anything with uh, tomato yeah and it's funny because i got like those little cherry tomatoes in the garden and i popped yeah. them like crazy i have no issues so i'm I can't I eat to the process part of, you know, like canned sauces. Canned. It, could, it could be the preservatives you're allergic to. I, I tried that, trying to eat just a fresh tomato. Within hours, I was throwing up huh. just from one uh, quarter slice of a tomato. See, I'm like, uh, I'll have heartburn almost all night. And then the only way to get rid of the heartburn is to, to throw up almost. And yep, I'll suffer exactly. until I'm sick, and it's like, I don't make myself sick on purpose, you know, just after whatever, a few hours of having the heartburn, I guess all the stomach juices, you know, wants to come out. And exactly. you, sound like, you sound like the guy in the commercial for Nixon, the purple pill. <laughs> that, that's exactly what happened with you're me. You're the guys that need the purple pill. I'm See, already you? taking that. I've I've got a cat. If, if, if I've, lear I've learned uh, just the diet, eat different stuff. You know. No, see, for me, I'm the opposite. I got cast iron in the gut. If I get sick to my stomach, do you best believe the food was bad, or something was wrong? Because I can eat damn near anything, and I mean, I eat 
hot foods all the time. Um, I eat I, spicy food now. Garlic I chicken, eat tomatoes. I wings. can I I can't eat tomatoes, but I can eat ketchup. I can eat spaghetti sauce. If I bite a raw tomato, I'll vomit all over you. I can't do it. But I eat ketchup and I eat tomato sauce and I eat marinara sauce and all this other. I just can't eat a raw tomato. Boy. So, but hey guys, I see you yawning. On that note, we gonna call it. <laughs> <Sorry. We're> all <laughs> sleepy. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. But guys, I want to thank you again, and uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, you know, check out Big Boons, check out the Rice Trapping. Uh, tomorrow, I'll go back on and I'll leave their links down below. So if you missed it in the live broadcast, I will link them down below so you guys can check out their channels. Don't forget the moderators, everybody in blue; those are family. And um, I'm probably talking to myself at this point. But guys, thank you very thank much for being here tonight. Oh, anytime, anytime. You guys are always welcome. You know, any any of you guys that, that want to come on, I, I'm one of them people where I don't want to throw a, a link in the chat because you never know where that leads you. Um, but you, you guys track those, and sometimes you never know. You right. Might have a, you might know. have a big name in the chat, and then you're going to want to drop that link to get yeah. that big name yeah. off. You never know. Right. Right. No, and we have that freedom, and that's what I like about this is that we can put the link if we want somebody to come on. If we don't, I, like I like to do is send it to you guys. You have yeah, yeah. it, you know. Uh, Cause you never know when Karen might pop in and go, rrr, 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 yeah, infantry, yeah, you're yeah. drinking beer. Oh my God. I can't believe you're drinking beer and smoking a vape and you're 40 years old, but you, your family's taken care of and your bills are paid. And oh my God. Yeah. Remember that guy, brother, right? Or that and lady. Why did she get a hold of me about. She got a hold you're, of you. You're, the, you're, you're the, the moderator. Part. Why didn't you tell him to stop she, it? See, you well, were, I served my country for eight years. So he could do that shit. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I mean, there's always going to be a Karen. Um, man, we just try to keep it. That's why I love my mods. We try to keep it safe in here for everybody, and we want to do that. That's what it's about here is get outdoors, but do it safely. Get outdoors and experience it, but do it safely. So, guys, I'm going to let my boys go to sleep because it, it's it, – never mind, brother, right? He's like on – it's dinner time. Me and Boone is bedtime. Oh, yeah, yeah bedtime. I'm, about, I'm about to go throw food in the microwave and eat mm -hmm. dinner. He gonna go make dinner. Me and Boone's dinner time was like four or five hours ago. I'm gonna go eat my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> and then I gotta go down and talk to this guy about doing he's uh doing the security tonight, and I gotta go tell him about something new tonight. Well, you so, be careful out there, dude. Just be careful, be then, safe. Then yeah. I gotta go hunt some raccoons. So there you yeah, go. My night's just beginning. Sweet. Oh, well, more stories, more videos for the future. Excellent. <laughs> Guys, have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. And everybody watching, give a big thumbs, thumbs up, especially if you made it this far. You deserve a thumbs up. Thank you for watching, and I hope that this and all of our live streams and adventures inspires you to get outdoors. Until we meet again on Wednesday, Friday, and Friday night, I'm the Infantry. Y'all have a wonderful night. God bless. We'll Peace. see you next time. Take care. I'll let you later. Later, guys.